Coco Talk is an unscripted live broadcast. Anything can and will happen. The views and opinions expressed by members of the panel and the live audience are their own and not necessarily those of the Coco Talk show, its sponsors, affiliates, or subsidiaries. Open minds encourage, sense of humor recommended. If any off color comments were made, we're sorry. Hi, this is Dale Lear, designer of TRS-80 Color Baseball, and you're listening to Coco Talk. This is Coco Talk, the world's leading live talk show featuring the Tandy Color Computer. It's time to drop your socks and grab your real-time clocks, and let's rock. Coco Talk is rocking the 8-bit world, keeping the Tandy flame alive. We may be mocked, but we'll never stop, because Coco Talk is rocking the 8-bit world. All right, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Coca Talk. We are now with you on episode 133, and today we celebrate a very special day. A day celebrating the birth of none other than Nick Marota, Nick Marota, Nick Marota! Coco Talk is rocking the 8 world, keeping the tiny flame alive. We may be mocked, but we'll never stop, because Coco Talk is rocking the 8 world. <laughs> all right we are here we are live on this very special day where we give thanks to the blessings that is nick Marota. that is or uh, that are the blessings that are nick Marota. uh we are thankful for you nick Marota. nick Marota. nick Marota. uh to tell you how thankful we are uh somewhere or another i had a thing that i lost that now i need to found uh almost sounds like a song uh was blind I, and now you see? yeah i was blind and now i see but here we go nick marota oh wow happy birthday everybody sing along if you know the words to, to you. you happy, happy birthday. birthday nick marota nick marota nick marota, nick marota. happy birthday Everybody, take it from the top, this time with feelings. Okay. A little reprise to here. To you. Happy birthday. Do you ever seen yeah, anybody headbang to a ukulele before? This is cool. I don't know the second verse. There, yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> Nobody ever gets around uh, to see you. I'm giving my cameraman <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Nick Mother F and Maroda. Happy birthday, USOB. All right, so here we go. I feel so loved. All right, all right. All right. Was that one of you guys? Yeah. Or did you find that somewhere? Uh, that was Jason. Jason got out his $5 ukulele and pre recorded wow. that. So. And that's yeah. our show, folks. Yeah. He's, he's Good the night, Van Halen of ukulele. I don't think I that your $5 ukulele could make sounds any Listen, if I, it, Okay, one more time from the top. <laughs> say, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> sounds exactly We're coming out of the box. It's, 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 it's a perfect worse. reproduction. All right, that's of our show. Good night, no folks. Idea. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Good you. Night. Thank I'm, I'm going right. to call him Nick Marota Cube uh, now. Hold, hold on one, one second. Here, times, here we go. <laughs> this concludes another episode of Coco Talk, the world's leading live talk show featuring the Tandy Color Computer. For all things Coco Talk, visit us on the web. All right, we're kidding. We kid. We kid. We kid. We're not. I kid. I kid. <laughs> Are we allowed maybe... to ask how old you are now, Nick? Uh, does it have to be in decimal? <laughs> all right. It has to be in binary. <laughs> how old are you in binary? Binary will make you sound ancient, so go for it. If I could be serious for just a minute. Um, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, I, I can't goes... think of anybody I'd rather hang out with or any anywhere I'd rather be on my birthday. And uh, so I'm just going to make do with you guys. 
<laughs> that's unfortunate. At least think, you had Tim Hortons think, Timbits today. That's, that's I good. did. I got shortchanged, but uh, I did get Timbits. Mm-hmm. That's okay. It makes up for the times I've asked for twenty and gotten like twenty-five. So I guess it's, it all balances yeah. out in the, in the Tim Hortons counting is life. not an exact science. No. Oh. Timbits are like little uh, donut holes for the Americans. Oh, they're like the Dunchkin Munchkin things that we have here. Yeah, some some yes. of the you know, some areas in the United States do have Tim Hortons, so I know what you're talking about. Mm. Yes. Well, thank you, guys. Seriously, I was this is uh, I was actually really kind of happy that uh, it would fall on my birthday this year because it's, it's really one of my favorite things of the week. So likewise, uh, likewise, really this is awesome. what falling. And I will mention like. to Nick as well the the version of Xenion that I released this last week, which will be going over the news. Um, the six eight zero nine optimized one was specifically for you. I wasn't originally going to release it, but I figured since you don't have a six three nine yet, Aww. you won't be able to upgrade it soon. What the heck? Give you a little bit of a oh, what a nice guy. Birthday yeah, you guys, you optimization, guys really yeah. Yeah. See, and on my birthday, it was a show day, and I went I went to the theme park. Hmm. <laughs> Your gift to yourself is being away from us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Coco Talk is a gift, is a yeah, uh, theme is. park. Gifts that won't stop giving whether you ask it to or not. Ken Riker it's says. It's like an uh, unfinished roller coaster. Tim, Ken says that the Tim Hortons dozen is 11. <laughs> yeah. Also, Tom C. said earlier when we were singing along there, said, don't give up your day jobs. Yeah, right. I don't. Bruce is asking for the Nick Moroda audio blip. <clears throat> That's oh, on that my Bruce soundboard. Playing? Well, here, Bruce I could playing? do I could do it manually. So, was that Bruce playing the uke or who was that? No, that was, was that Jason. Else? That was Jason on the $5 uke. Oh, uh let's see if we can find the nick marota blip here i, I think it was I, on his double neck uke but anyway there we go <laughs> yeah. there's such thing oh crikey's come on nick marota. there we go it looks something like this Oh, that's the double uke. That's just the ten dollar deluxe ukulele right there so <laughs> that, that sounds like you just the- to go back to the five dollar store and glue two of these together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that that's a lot cheaper than heard. mine was. I'll say that. Yeah, go ahead. Sound bite you just heard was from Bruce. That's one of the nice things that you guys have given me over this last year. The Bruce, the Bruce. I've yeah. Sound bites. I've gotten uh, all kinds of. Uh, spent time we have a special there. dedication to you at the end of every show. Your name is up there three times, thrice. Because I love hearing my name. Apparently, you, that you just do. makes me feel very good. Honestly, I'm starting to get jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Because nobody says Curtis Boyle, Curtis Boyle, Curtis Boyle. Because when you do, well, they say it once, and then they say, "Get the heck out of here." So, so if my character gets killed off next week, I'll know why. <laughs> Amnesia. All right, he's in a coma. Oh, poor Nick. We're gonna... <laughs> it's not, not a tumor. Yes. Are we gonna go with the introductions now? Uh, are we gonna talk about Coco at all? We're not done Is talking about the show Nick. besides Nick. That counts, we are not know. done talking about Nick. Jealous boy. <laughs> that's it i'm going to my trailer that's it next to the lovely and talented nick Morota on his left and on someone else's right we have ron Delvo. hello everybody hello ron this, hand, Delvo. this hand shows all right <laughs> ron has got a tandy product or two back there what two you got two, two tandy products we got we got floppies two. we got mpis we've got yep. uh, audio spectrum analyzers going on there yep. we got all kinds of stuff yeah. And uh, nightmare analyzers. <laughs> yes. Oh, we forgot to mention that. Okay. So, in honor of today being Nick Morota's birthday, everyone in the audience is going to get a free copy of Nightmare Highway. Yay! Promo code Nick Morota cubed. Woo! All right, we're going to try that one again. In honor of today <laughs> being Nick Morota's birthday. Yeah. Everyone in the audience today will get a we'll free get copy of Nightmare Highway. Nightmare, Nightmare Highway. 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 Yeah, you guys suck. All right. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're too we, we can't okay. all be Nick Marota, you know. So we're gonna we're gonna basically introduce the panel as it revolves around Nick Marota because that's the way the world <laughs> should be. So to the right of Nick Marota, we've got Mark D. <laughs> Mark D. Mark D. We're getting to panel introductions. I'm introducing the panel now. You have nothing to say. Say something, Mark something all right okay Okay. Um, glad to be here okay and 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 we mean this not only metaphorically but literally but beneath nick marota is john (laughs) 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 laurie 
John it's Larry. It's a wonder we said. still have guests on this program. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, adjacent corner to John Larry, we have Jason Reichert, the Coco Man. Welcome, Jason. <clears throat> Coco Talk now 100% gluten free. <laughs> and another adjacent always? corner from Nick Moroda. We've got Grant Leedy. Hey, Grant. Hey, how's it, hey, how's it going, guys? And Nick, you're an old fart, by the way. Just to let you know. Yeah, I know. I, I fit right in. <laughs> all right. Not the oldest. And that's Actually, on this panel, probably one of the younger ones, I would guess. But... Matt, right, he's a, probably, yeah. He's a spry 49. 50, 51. <laughs> 51. 51. Yeah. Yeah, younger right. than me. Thanks, thanks for making me feel old. <laughs> Off in the corner, somewhere in old Canada, L. Curtis Boyle's with us. How's it going, eh? Yep. Oh uh, well, we're we're celebrating Nick's birthday in a proper Canadian way. We had two inches of snow this morning, so beauty, eh? Beauty, eh? love it. All right. <laughs> Ken says you got a smoky on your tail there, Greg. <laughs> We've got with us coming from the musical basement of somewhere in Ohio, Brian, the Music Man Schubering. Welcome, Brian. Ohio, that's Illinois, buddy. Illinois, you're talking you know. some war here. Listen, I, I'm not, <laughs> happy uh, birthday, Mark, or uh, Mar- Mar- Nicholas Marotta. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not, another it's one of those weeks that yes. works. Okay, uh, not Ohio. I'm sorry, friend. Illinois. Listen, I'm I'm geographically illiterate. Yes, yeah, some somewhere that's not Florida. I can't I can't figure anything out else past the boot. So uh, what are you talking about there? All right, thank you, Italy, you for mean, being here. What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly Sorry. all right we have down under and in the bottom of the screen on the bottom of the planet none under than mr nicholas morantes good eye nick good eye, everyone. you said none under none under <laughs> none under <laughs> and this, this daylight savings kicked in so i could have actually uh, slept another hour today i i got up at my usual time for the show and there were, oh. i was told no it's an hour later now he looked at his clock yeah and that said, buggered me up too <laughs> yeah. I, I could have been finish. out shoveling a whole other hour. Well, I actually know I'm fine with that. Thanks for starting the show. Later. Hey, Nick, are you, is, are, how old are you, Nick? Uh, me? Yeah. Oh, well, if, if I tell you, I have to kill you. Uh, <laughs> 55. I'll do it. I'll do it. You're 55. I'm probably oh, the oldest old. one here. Huh. Actually, I'm 55, too. I'm, wow. I'm 65. Wow. 59. I can't drive 55. I can't drive 55 either. We have a co-host of Tandy Data Products Talk. Terry Steggy's with us. Hey, Terry. Hey, guys. Happy hey. birthday, Nick. Thanks, Terry. Hey, Terry, how come you don't have the Steggy in the background? My uh, screen's not working right. I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. <laughs> oh. All right. And then we just got joined by John Strong of Strongware. Welcome, John. Welcome. All right. He's here. Hey, He's here. And we're going to start the show. We want to say hello to everybody in Facebook right now, mm-hmm. Facebook and YouTube. Let's say hi to the people right now. Mark B is here. Terry Steen is here. Ken Reichert is here. DeBruce is here. Curtis is here. Mark Overholzer, Mark B. Tom C is here. Ken Reichert is here. Al Hartman from Jersey is here. Al Hartman, Ken Reichert, Mark B. Nick Marota is in the live chat. DeBruce is here. Al Hartman, uh, Terry Steen, I'm starting to repeat myself here. Alexander Wallace has joined us from Mexico. Rob Inman's in the house. Al Hartman, Terry Steggy, Curtis Boyle. We have all kinds of people in the live chat. I'm not sure if anybody's chatting with us right now on Facebook or not. We are also, I'm also multi streaming to the book face. There apparently are a few. So far, no chatting, but there is a few viewers out there in Bookface. So hello to you there, Bookface. So we're live. We're talking Coco. We have now gotten past the most important part of the show, which is just acknowledging Nick Morota, Nick Morota, Nick Morota. So now that we've done that, now that we've introduced who's on the panel, uh, we don't. That's ha- about me. What do you guys think about? Me? Exactly. What do you guys think about Nick Morota? By the way, let's just open it up. How about oh, the no, oh my no, God, is no, he old? no? Can we be honest? <laughs> I was kidding. The Nick Morota celebrity roast has uh, begun. Oh, great. <laughs> I think we have too other week. Content. What are you talking about? Uh, the ukulele king. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, as I would tell my brother, happy birthday. <laughs> whose birthday is it? I would tell my, as I would tell my brothers, instead of saying birthday, I'd say happy birthday. Burp. Burp day. Burp. As in belch. Belch. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Happy, happy bodily function day to you, Nick Marota. All right. 
Uh, do we have project updates, acquisitions, stories to tell, stories to share? Um, how about we start with the birthday boy? Anything new and exciting with you, birthday boy? Yes, over my shoulder, I've got uh, I've got uh, sent to me from uh, Mark Overhoser. I have audio spectrum analyzer with manual in excellent condition. Nice. Somehow I collected two of them with manuals. Wow. Imagine that. So that's actually a live feed ish of our uh, of our podcast of video. of, of Coco Talk being analyzed. Yes. Audibly. Ish. It's off by a few couple like half a second because the way I have it hooked up. But yes. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's really cool. That's very, very cool. Um, and along with a couple of other or sort of things, got some cool screwdrivers and nice little, uh, nice little package of, of stuff from them. So I, I really appreciate that. Thanks, Marco. You're welcome. Mark Overholzer sending the birthday wishes. All right. <laughs> very cool. What about Jason, the Coco Man Reichard? Anything new since your earth shattering revelation last week of this new product that everyone must have, the Joey? Um, Joey. Well, well, first of all, while we were talking about like, you know, I had like the pound of screwdrivers for Mark Overhoser <laughs> I have here right, right at the ready. And um, you know, as far as far as the Joey goes, have one right. Oh, there's the five dollar you there. Got the got the. Hey, um, hey David. David. There's David. <laughs> um, got the got the got the, uh, got the uh, Joey here and. Uh, uh, well, and of course now we're uh, we're taking pre-orders. You can go to uh, cocoman.biz/joey if you want to pre-order. I'm expecting to start shipping December-ish. It's looking at this point, just uh, getting everything in and getting it done. And uh, and if you and if you pre-order now, you also get a free digital download of Nightmare Highway. Nightmare Highway. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, we're glad to have you here. We're thankful for the Joey. Uh, we just been joined by David O'Connor. Welcome to the program, David. Hi, hey, Stevie. Hello, everybody. Nick's some, neighbor. Uh, massive, yeah, massive computer issues before. Stupid Windows 10 updates. I yeah. usually turn it off, and it uh, decided it was going to turn itself on, and it snuck in an update and stuffed up all my audio drivers. So, oh. uh, just stop it, stupid yeah. Windows 10. That, that's enough you have <laughs> anything, so, yeah, new, I, uh, anything new and exciting with you this week? Uh, uh, I've, I've planned on having a, a whole lot of new and exciting things happening, but not many of them have come to fruition. But uh, uh, yeah, I've got a, a little acquisition to share later on. Okay. So, uh, well, yeah. Okay. What about Brian, the music man, Shoebring in, um, not in Ohio, but in Illinois, in the musical basement? What's going on with you, Mr. Music Man? Testes one, two. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> People yeah. don't want the spotlight on them. <laughs> oh, I was actually just grabbing my Coco 2 with uh, my Spectrum Audio Analyzer and hooking it up. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, really not too much new here other than uh, I'm finally going to get into uh, my code for my uh, MIDI box, jukebox player for MIDI files and uh, break it apart instead of one big hairy looping piece of code bring it apart and uh, learn how to chain the modules properly okay and and curtis can you yep. point me to a good uh, spot where i can see some good examples of uh chaining modules passing variables returning them back and such what, what language uh basic 09 i'm sorry that's oh, what okay. it is right now yeah it's yeah no it's not that, that's not too hard at all their book does not explain it all that much. It just says, oh, just chain it here and then just pass back and just make sure you got a variable that can receive the uh, variable back. Yeah. No, well, I, I won't do it on the air here, but yeah, we can we can chat about that afterwards. Most definitely. I'm not looking for, uh, shall we say, discourse right immediately, but okay. it's just something yeah. I want to do. I mean, eventually I do want to do a basic nine, you know, tutorial series and a nitro sign tutorial series here on the show as a segment, but not 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 yet. I got to get EOU5 done and a few other things first. Hey, Brian Schubring, I do have a question for you because maybe I misunderstood you. You you recently announced you were working on salvaging a, a hard drive for Tony Pedraza and something on that hard drive. I thought you were saying had a BBS. And... Right. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the issue with that was this is that that is that he Tony's been trying to get his system back up and running. 
mm-hmm. that what that um it was this main system he had uh, like two or three uh, scuzzy hard drives and that he would back them up like every week or so and um you know met, met against each other and kind of mirror them out and he's been trying to get his system unpacked and running and for i guess this year and also last year he tried to get it to boot and it won't and i got much of the hardware that he has and i actually tried to use my uh disto uh super controller it's not a super controller too though i thought it was um and that but uh it fails to read my disk drive or floppy drives properly so i actually had to go with uh, the uh regular floppy drive so I can uh, read his boot disk and all of that, but uh, his boot disk I can't even read, mm. which is kind of interesting. Um, but uh, since I had the uh, the TC uh, three or the TC nine uh, SCSI controller from uh, Mark, and that I just simply just uh, added the drivers for it, and I was able to access his hard drive and uh, back it up to a disk image. Just had to do it twice because I had to uh, demode the descriptor. So that I had like about 250 meg instead of 58 meg of space because he had uh, 250 some odd meg uh, hard drive. So, <laughs> oh, was it full? Um, oh, it got very full real quick. You try to you try to slap 248 megs worth of data onto a 57 meg hard drive image. It so Tony, Tony's 250 meg is actually was full. Like it wasn't just. Oh uh, no, space. it was. It was only about. Uh, about 127 meg w- worth of data on that, but some of the data was uh, looks like it was got corrupted or or bad, so I was only able to get about 115 meg off of it. Um, you know, I just simply used the dsave command and boom, got it from there over to the image on my system, and you know, it took all a day to do it, but uh, he now has an image of uh, his hard disk that. Uh, contains all his personal information plus also uh the bulletin board system too yeah that's the part that i was kind of curious about because when you had posted that i said hey would this be available to the public at some point in time and then tony's like well you want to make my personal files available and i wasn't looking for that but i just thought if we had a an archive of a bulletin board kind of like how we got the archive of um delphi it'd be kind of neat to kind of scroll through history and look at some old stuff yeah so the message base is some um, of the files that might have disappeared from CompuServe and Delphi that we never got back. They might be on there too. I mean, there's a possibly a whole treasure trove of so, stuff. So I mean, there. I don't know if that's if that's something that we can look into down the road, but it would be interesting if there was a, if there is a snapshot of a bulletin board system that existed in the past. It'd be kind of neat to look at it now, you know. Yeah, um, I was able to look at you know like the user base and whatnot, but there wasn't really a whole lot of messaging going back and forth. Um, Messaging, I I believe on his system, if I recall correctly, uh, was going through actually FidoNet. Mm. So it, oh, I, if he has any of those, yeah. I'd love to have those back. Yeah, I don't I don't know if if I'd have I actually have an, uh, the image of the uh, of the hard drive myself and that. Okay. So it, well, it's that'd be interesting dis- to see if that ever yeah. came to fruition. Yeah, but a lot of the uh, download files and other upload uh, upload and download files in that um, are basically empty. So for some reason, we he couldn't recover those for some reason. Now, Mark Marlette has a hard drive also, which is supposedly a copy of it. It's possible what I got is an earlier copy that may not have all the files. I don't know if I can get a hold of that uh, hard drive from Mark. I could try it again and see if maybe something got missed on uh, different images. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see. I'm okay. going to contact okay. that. Would, that would be interesting to see. It'd be it'd be neat to have yep. another one of these kind of historical things that we could peek into. You know, I love the idea of being able to look at Delphi, which I missed that train completely. So, the fact that archives out there and we can kind of scan through it, it's neat. It's neat to kind of peek into the past. You know. Yeah, and I'd love to see some of the old like OS9 Echo and Coco Echo stuff from FidoNet that I I contributed actively for years on and I don't have any of it anymore. Okay. Cool. That stuff was a long time ago. Ron, yeah, Ron. so that's what's been happening over here. So Okay, great. I'm going to, I'm going to set up my version of um, Audio Spectrum Analyzer behind me. Excellent. We can't get enough. Um, Ron Delvo, did we ask you what's new? cooking this week i don't remember <clears throat> no you, if you want to throw up my um you know my ron's garage thing quick can you uh i can certainly try let's yeah, go to bookie mcbookface 
Bookie McBookface. And if not, Jason can play it on the uke for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's really talented. He did a great job that song. <laughs> Ron's garage. Or if you need time, you can go to somebody else and come back to me. Yeah, and well, you get what, it ready. yeah. No, give me, give me one second here. We are switching over to Ron's garage on Facebook right now. Here we go, Ron. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I had uh, Fred. Well, first off, this. Uh, I guess it's Ukraine. There's a guy from Ukraine who uh, showed a video of his collection. He has oh, a man. museum in yeah. Ukraine. Okay. I and I saw right a uh, color computer too, and the recorder down below it there. Yeah. And then uh, toward uh, in another part of the video was this um, Coco One. Yeah. And at the end, it, Gizmodo did it, and they put their logo over our Coco. Oh, Isn't that's that cool? neat. That is cool. You have to look at it. He's uh, speaks in whatever language they have and that's okay. the video there all right so a peek into the soviet computer revolution on gizmodo okay yeah pretty cool then this to the thrift guy yep yep he, yep, yep. he found uh coco for three bucks at a, at a is this in Goodwill. your news uh curtis well the thrift one that's actually from like 2016 and i thought we'd covered it back when it first happened oh i don't know i never saw so it. I, I didn't put it in the news because i've i've, I've okay. seen that like years ago okay that, same one so, so you're saying it, oh, it, oh my goodness was this a smoking coco yes if you go down no it's not a, it's a model three if you go yeah. down quite a ways you'll Smoke. see the uh first thing i i well i brought that in the house with a, a large uh oh my god i turned it on later and the smoke came out <laughs> is that the, did you release the magic smoke run yeah it came right out you know the hardest part about releasing the smoke putting it back putting it back in. in that's right yeah look at all that magic smoke coming yeah. out of just get toast is burning check it yeah. out huh and here yeah, I thought you were people, just doing a grand entrance with dry ice like rock stars use. How many people have uh, actually seen that? I mean, you, you always have it happen and you never have a camera nearby. So and this is this real. This I is did. not staged. This is real magic oh. smoke. This is, yes. this is a real computer committing So suicide. basically what we're seeing is we're seeing the soul of this computer going to heaven right now. Yeah, going to heaven. Oh, I had an dude. old I had an old floppy drive that I plugged in recently that instantly smoked, but that, that's wow. that's been it been it for, for a this, while. I mean, this almost looks like a prop, like you put a dry ice machine inside yeah. here for Halloween or something. My wife know. goes, "Is it supposed to do that?" <laughs> <laughs> then she ran out and got the wiener sticks and marshmallows. <laughs> The answer said, is yes once. Uh, I said we're gonna un <laughs> we're gonna unplug it real quick here. I, got, I do have a question for you, Ron. Yeah. Are any of those bananas still available? I'm a little hungry. Uh, <laughs> no, they're gone. They're gone. Now, uh, if, that's it. It, it uh, had a printer that came with this uh, model. Wow, what the a printer shame. worked, what a worked fine, and it didn't squirt anything out of it. <laughs> Did you so, figure out what smoked on it? Is it like the power? No, supply? not yet. They say it's a Riffa. Um, oh yeah, suppressive yeah, cap. Yep, yep. Yeah. And, yeah. The uh, Apple II have the same problem. Yeah. So they are, uh, I'm, I'm not really on for it. Yeah, I'm not too concerned. Are, uh, oh, uh, just so you have... know, uh, Bruce Moore was correcting us. They don't speak Russian in the Ukraine. They speak Ukrainian in the Ukraine oh. on that video. I think they wrong. speak some Russian too. That's funny. Yeah, oh. Ukrainian primarily. Uh, I wouldn't know. What what well, what language do they speak in America? American. 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 Yep. There we go. American. American. That's American. That's we with speak, all those misspellings from proper we, English. We speak American. Who's your? Mur, we speak American. Where you at? America. Yeah. We, all right. We, that, uh, we talk Ron, joke, Ron, man. When it, <laughs> talk joke, man. When it, when it, when it, when it, Ron, when it went up in smoke. Yes. <laughs> get the reference. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ron Delvo oh, up in yeah. smoke. I, I leaned yeah, over if, and took some in, man. It was oh, great. Man. Man. Oh man! If it was, if it was the, if it was the the reefer caps, which is how we pronounce it. <laughs> um, that actually is how you pronounce it, reefer caps over yeah. here anyway in Australia. Um, they, caps, what was his name? Ronnie yeah. Chong. Is Ronnie Chong back? Yeah, Ronnie <laughs> Chong is back. Yeah, he is, man. They yeah. they actually emit a really foul yeah. smell, and if it was a strong, stinky smell, it would almost certainly be reefer caps. Did you say re did you say reefer caps? Is this I, that's that's how we, that yeah, in, that's in the model. That's actually how we pronounce it in Australia. So I don't know whether it's how we pronounce it in it's, USA. All right, Australia, you're talking, don't fear the reefer yeah. caps. Don't fear, now listen. If there's reefer caps, that sounds like a hat you could smoke. A reefer cap. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to ask Chet next time he's on. Uh, doesn't hey. last long, man. <laughs> right. yeah, it's it's my, uh, it goes up in the air and doesn't come uh, back. I've never seen anyone eat that a, much I've acid a, before in my yeah. life. 
<laughs> I've got a big Hammond, uh, not a Hammond, a Yamaha D85 organ here. It's a, it's a, with their biggest model in 1980. It was worth something like 40 grand, and um, that's got reefer caps on the uh, on the input filter. And and when I got it here and first switched on and after I bought it, it worked great. And then all of a sudden, I had this big bang and this waft of smoke out the back, and exactly what you were talking about, Ron. And it was the reefer caps. I just left them, you know. I, I haven't even bothered replacing them. I just got a pair of pliers and snipped them off because I'm feeding them. They're, they're, all they do, all they do is they filter the input mains, and I'm feeding all my uh, equipment and everything from filtered mains already from my solar setup. So I don't even need them, oh, um, mm. and it w works perfectly without them. So I just left it. Okay. Well, <laughs> on the I, Apple I, computer, they used to knock off noise from the computer being generated onto your AC lines and interfering with stuff in your house. So. Ah, interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah I, yeah, I yeah, haven't yeah, turned it back like on, so I don't believe it's going to come on. Okay. <laughs> it, quite, it, it quite possibly will. If it doesn't, it will only be a blown fuse. And if, oh. you, if it's blown the fuse, if you snip off the reefer caps and put a new fuse in it, it'll probably work. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Ron Del Vaux has got some pictures for us on Ron's Garage. If you're not familiar with Ron's Garage, it's one of about 19 different color computer related groups that Ron has on Facebook. We've got Ron's yeah. Garage. Show us your TNDs. Yeah. We've got Nitrous 9. Uh, uh, do you also host a color computer marketplace one, too, or is that somebody no, else? No, I did the label. The Cover yeah, for artwork it. for it. Okay, so Ron, uh, Ron has many. Coco Pie. Coco Pie group. Yeah, yeah. I have Coco Gallery. Coco Gallery. Yeah, the MC10. Well, yeah. Cocoa Krispies. Uh, Cocoa Krispies, my favorite cereal. Yes. So I, okay. oh, I love, <laughs> all right. I love the MC10. All right. So as we go around the room, uh, project updates and acquisition. Does L Curtis Boyle have anything he wants to let us know about? Uh well, I released a couple more six through nine and the one six through nine optimized game we mentioned earlier. Thank you, Curtis. I'll, I'll cover in the news there because I got some side by side videos that David Ladd was okay. nice enough to put together for David us. Ladd. And uh, I also finally got started back on Nitrous 9, Ease of Use Beta 5. Yay. I got the new IO Man that Bill worked on three or four months ago, and I've actually got it to assemble. I haven't actually put it into test it yet, but uh, work is starting now finally. Excellent, excellent, excellent. What about you? You can hear all the angels in the background. Oh, uh, John Lowry, anything new and exciting with you in the world of retro hobbies? Not really. Uh, just my uh, switcheroo that showed up today. I can't wait to get that going. Uh, I still need a, a SCART to HDMI that's on, uh, on its way from China. Excellent. Uh, should be here in the next couple of days. I'll be able to test it out. Uh, but uh, honestly, just got back to work this week and uh, haven't been doing much in terms of like programming. Or Let's see that shirt, man. <laughs> the shirt I'm wearing, yeah, is a uh, NASA. Yeah, all right. It's the meatball so, they call it. The meatball. Yeah, NASA meatball. <laughs> That's what they call it. It's NASA, NASA Plum meatball. NASA Plumbrook in Sandusky, Ohio. It's pretty rare to get in there because. Well, uh, isn't that the home of the very first nuclear reactor? Uh, I don't no. think so. Plumbrook. Back in the '40s, it was a munitions thing. They had these specially designed buildings where they would store the. Uh, explosives in case it went up uh, in case it ex a building exploded it would go up not sideways and take out the other buildings um but at some point in the 60s nasa took over and uh the largest vacuum chamber in the world is there oh, okay yep uh, i actually met a guy that works there just uh, a few months ago was we were in a particular uh, class for something and uh, like mm -hmm. you work for NASA in Ohio. I've seen that place. I've driven past that place. I was surprised to see something NASA in Sandusky, Ohio. Yeah, it's a satellite of uh, NASA Glenn out of Cleveland. Uh, I mean, he told and, me about uh, the vacuum chamber, like you just mentioned there. Yeah, it's uh, it, there's two of them there. There's one that they can put rocket engines in, close the lid, and they test rocket engines that have to fire in the vacuum of outer space. And that one's pretty cool. Uh, but then the big one is featured in the movie, The Avengers, at the very beginning of the movie Avengers, The Avengers, when they, the Tesseract and all that, that's all done inside the vacuum chamber in Sandusky there. Hmm. And uh, they do all sorts of neat stuff there. And uh, it's a cool place. I really like it a lot. They don't let people in very much because there's a lot of, because they test rockets there, there's like big tanks of hydrogen and stuff like that. So they don't uh, let the public in very often. It's in like a 20 square, 20 mile by 20 mile square mile area. And then they, they're in the middle of it. 
and the rest of it's all farmland in case the place blows up. It won't kill too many people. <laughs> Not too many people. Acceptable. Yeah. Acceptable, right? So, um, acceptable loss. Okay, very cool. Welcome to NASA Talk, everybody. Um, you do realize that we're here to celebrate Nick Marota's birthday. That had nothing to do with Nick Marota nor his birthday, so shame on you. Uh, <laughs> uh, very cool. Well, we're glad to have you here on the show, John Lowry. We've talked to Jason. We've talked to Brian. How about from down under Nick Marentes, who woke up an hour early today? Uh, but we're glad that you're here, Nick Marentes. What's new and exciting with you, sir? Oh, not too much. I've been uh, taking a uh, bit of a break from my gun star and working on my donut dilemma. So I'm trying to bring that to the uh, modern world by just doing a few updates to it. And I think last week I spoke of some color changes I did as well. So yep. just working on that. I'm going to be adding joystick controls, one of the main things. Yay, joysticks. Yay. So that'll be like a val will that be like a value added bundle with Gunstar? I'll probably I'll probably bundle it with um Gunstar, I guess. Um I remember at one time you were talking about rebooting or updating Rupert I uh, see I can't yeah, remember well, the real name. Is it Rupert, Rupert Rhymes or Rupert Rhythm? Rupert Rhythm. <laughs> Rhythm. Yeah. I, I I still do plan to yeah, do it's that. It's a disaster, so. isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah. Rupert so Disaster slowly, with Fun Star. Yeah, Rupert. that's right. I've been slowly updating my old programs because when I wrote them, you know, I was still learning. And so mm. there's certain things I could do better now. And I just thought I'd just bring them up to uh, the modern world. Are you world suffering from George Lucas syndrome right now? We're getting all the special editions. Yeah, well, that's right. The director's cuts <laughs> the director's now. You're getting the director's cuts, cuts now. Yeah, I was going to go through and optimize some of Nick's programs, kind of like I'm doing some of the other ones here. But then I looked at the code and it was so horrid. I just said, this is yeah, my <laughs> Would you like some sauce with that spaghetti code? <laughs> <laughs> he tossed it into the ease of use garbage can. Uh, yeah. He pulled that the really nice, down pristine looking bit. garbage can. Yes. Pull the difficulty down a little bit. Yeah, he's got For a North wimpy, American players. got a wimpy loser and a Nick and Steve level too. So we need the uh... yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's gun style, barely yeah. barely breathing levels. <laughs> I have the, to the rename semi sentient ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we it have was a re- the Stevie mode or yeah. the uh, normal mode. <laughs> right. We have a request for Neutroid HD. Can you give us an HD version of Neutroid at any given time? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I was thinking of a 3D version. Oh, yeah. Is that Uh, hyperdilation? (laughs) John Strong of Strongware is with us. John, what you been cooking up in your laboratories? Well, well, I just... um... As I announced last week, I did the insert version, got it designed finished for the uh, the new FDO 502 controller. Okay, um, is this the Ian Maverick reproduction? Con- uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And okay. so that had actually started out as the design here, which I went ahead and implemented. I actually got to put the inserts in here and, and print the top, but. I have my new version of the Kogo SDC. Ooh, case. very nice. When what's nice. new about it? Well, it's gonna it has the snaps differently. It's gonna be shaped. Well hold it up where we can see it. You're looking at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you can you flip the switches without taking it apart? Yes. Flip oh the dip switches. So an opening for the dip switches, you mean? Yeah, it has one. I just don't have uh, a top here printed. Yeah. Oh, I see there's some nice grooves in there. So there's some, there's, hold it up a little higher, John. We can barely see it. Okay. There you go. Okay. Up here. Look at that. A little lower, a little lower. There you go. Okay. Okay, There we go. There we go. Now just put it right in front of your face so we don't have to look at you. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) 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 I'm used to that. (laughs) No, that's cool. I like, I like the textures and the grooves. It's got some style going on there now. Okay. And so it's kind of, you know, very similar to the, Dodd, are uh, those available in designer colors? Uh, what color are you wanting? Depends what about black. It it comes as, long as, it, as long as it's black. As yeah. long as it's black. <laughs> yep. Any color you want, as long as it's black. And so it'll have the cutout. This is for the other one, but it, the difference would be it has the cutout for the switches. Yeah, I like that. I like the subtle, okay. the, the nice little curves and the groove through the center and stuff. That's neat. Yeah. And for the people and, that have multiple machines that have dragons and cocos, having the dip switches handy is really going to be nice. And, and I know some people don't need it, and the the idea that this will, um, they they will snap in, okay, 
but I put the snap a lot wider than my older cases, so it's easier to take in and out. Okay. Okay. And then for those... Hold it up a little higher. We can't quite see it. Okay. okay. Now that looks good. Okay. And so for those who want a, a more permanent attachment, there's the screw in the bottom. Okay. Okay. And that will have the metal insert in it also. And... Uh, now, what about the um, the little button you press to switch discs? Is that still just a through hole, or have you in implemented like a, a physical button for that? Or uh, no, it's still there, but it's you get a lot more. Uh, Is it an any or an Audi? <laughs> I think you can press a little bit better, a little bit more okay. bevel on it. I may may need to put just a little bit more on it than what I got on this one. Generally, you can push it pretty good if you get finger nails. Okay. Okay. Let's and hold so it up where we can is, see that. Okay. Okay. And so we're gonna have a, oh yeah. Uh, kind of hard to see, know. but yeah. Yeah, I know it's okay. kind of hard to see. Uh, well, we could use our stylus. Yeah, here, there's right? a lot of yeah. um. Well, oh, we have got a. I got a previous version. It might show up more on the. But back. it's really it's, so it's still it's a through hole where you have to push in on the actual button. You don't have an external right. button pusher lever no. thingy. Okay. No, no All right. I don't. All right. And and on on the three D on the filament printed one that's kind of hard to do and make sure it's going to hold up yeah no that's fine no yeah that's good and so again it just kind of i like the, the subtle neck. grooves and you know it's not just a square case anymore so it's i, I yeah. like the kind and of well, stylistic the, enhancements the, the the idea of the first case was okay let's let's make a case it's good it's out there i can produce it and uh, so people don't have to use a 502 case and uh, because I, I announced it just shortly after uh, uh, Tim uh, said he was canceling his case that he was making for him. And so the idea was to keep, you know, old hardware from being sacrificed. Sure. And so I, I tried to do it as cheap, a low cost as possible. Here I'm going to charge for these just a, a few more dollars, okay, uh, $20 a piece. The case. Okay. I like the but little finger do. grooves there too, where you can kind of yeah get, get your. And so I added some of the out. extra things that I've done, and uh, I think it's going to be a, a really nice case. I, now, how much I've extra is, uh, for the cup holder version? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, uh, no cup holder. In, and you know, I'm going to show you something there, Ron. I'm going to show you what I actually have here. This is my wife got this for me. I don't know how well you can see this, but this is actually a clip on. It's like a giant, like clothespin clip. But can you can you zoom of, up your screen, Stevie, to show? Uh, yes, yeah, there any possible way? I don't know. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. This is oh, yeah. actually like. I need you to hold hold that higher. It's a it's a, I have this clipped on the side. Could of you my hold desk. it in front of your face? I can. Yes. <laughs> Nobody wants oh, to see better. my face. Much better. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have um I have a cup holder clip on. I have a, it's literally a clip on cup holder that you can put anywhere. So. Oh, <laughs> so you, cool. can, you have that on yeah. your new table? Yes, I do. It's on the side. Wow. Because I've already cool. spilled drinks on my new table. So. Um, oh. Yeah. So, so so John, you said it's going to be about twenty bucks a case. Yes. And and when when's the availability of them, do you think? Uh, they are available basically now. Okay. Is that American? Twenty dollars American? Yes. And then <laughs> if it's if it's uh, shipping in the United States, I do the, the the second day just so it's insured. And they have raised that price for the shipping to like seven ninety. Hmm. So uh, So what's like, all those wires and things in the background back there? Oh, little, got, little table. Oh yeah, I got all kinds of stuff over there. I've got. There's buttons and knobs and stuff on them. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like a kid in the candy store. John, buttons and knobs. Yeah. John's yeah. laboratory. Um, <laughs> oh well, well, it's just it's the part is you know trying to keep some things in there. We've got a bunch some... of stuff in here that's gonna go out uh, when I get the room finished painting next to here. And then there's stuff from there that's going to come in for my my projects and my electronics and, and so it's just like some that. of the stuff that makes everything wonderful work, huh? Yeah, and, you know, and then the back behind I got the hand radio, which is not hooked up right now. I've got to get some things set up. I got my big uh, I've got some setting on top of it, but I've got my um, shaky vision. Oh, that's one of the yeah. th is that one of the three D printers right there. 
No, that's actually that's my uh, photo printer. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, seventeen inch wide, and uh, and of course the laser printer and stuff I use for work. I don't get that kind of hard to aim this thing. Yeah. And then it's a little messy yet because I don't have anything up. And then you'll see that I, I'm running on my hi mom my 4K monitor. <laughs> oh wow! Look at that. Okay, so I have one of those big uh, 40-some inch 4K monitors from Acer, and uh, so that's what I do my development work on. Nice. Let's see where you have to paint. Uh, that's next the room next to us. Uh, okay, it's it's full of stuff. <laughs> all right, so, cool. Let's... And that uh, you know, so and then in the garage, I've got the 3D printer set out in the garage, mm -hmm. and we're just trying to get all that arranged and stuff. You know, priority has been main living space. So, it's... John, when when you have to print, do you uh, communicate from your computer to the garage through? Uh... Like a network, the network. It's a neural it net. It's a satellite-enabled neural net. It's a learning net too. So, well, so the the one of them has Wi-Fi <laughs> on it. Okay, but I've tried it and it's not real reliable. The Wi-Fi on it. So it's uh, it's just easier to sort of take the SD card and, and print it because it'll print standalone with the SD card and it doesn't matter what I'm doing on the computer. It doesn't time my no, computer. No, that's handy. The old-fashioned sneaker, sneaker net. Yeah. Yeah. It just works as a sneaker net, but uh, and the uh, the the SLA, the resin printer, takes actually a USB drive, and you plug it in, and the other takes SD cards, and so I do that. That way, you know, I can do whatever I want. Don't have to worry about you know something interfering with the software, which happened when I was running it directly straight. I'd have to tie the computer up to that. Sometimes I'll run something else and mess, it would mess with the software up, you know, com compete with memory and stuff. I don't have a lot of memory in this system because it, I've got a max out low take. It's, uh, it is a syscore uh, AMD CPU, but the motherboard only takes like uh, four gigs max. So I've got it maxed out. And so I'm, I'm, I've got to upgrade on things. But uh, so the, the 4K is really nice for doing things, and I can have multiple development tools up and emulator and all this stuff at the same time. And uh, so it's really nice to work with. Nice. Uh, so do you have a Coco set up anywhere? Hey, can, we, can we finish our it's, show and tell section here? Yeah. <laughs> we got a few so more people actually, to get to. With the, with the, new, with the new one. Uh, I have the Coco is actually have space here just to the left of me that I'm going to try to get to so it, it's set down. It's going to go up. If I can't sit it there all the time, I've got a place where, where I have my laptop for work. It goes to the back at the other time it's set up there. So it's basically right here to the left of me where I'm going to do the Coco stuff. And so, so that's kind of the setup there. All right, real quick, just so I make sure I get to everybody and then we can get back. I just wanted to be sure. sure. Um, um, Terry Steggy. Terry Steggy, did you have anything to update us on this week? Well, I just wanted to thank uh, Paul Shoemaker. He sent me a link on Facebook about a TDP version of video text. Oh, I think I saw uh, that. Yeah, um, I talked to the gentleman that was selling that. He also had the uh, learning lab for um, video, or I'm sorry, for TDP. So uh, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a picture of that. And most of the wikis that I've seen don't, don't ever really show anything other than a catalog number about it. So I'm pretty excited about that. And did you order those and did you, did you win the auctions on both of those? Yep, I did. Okay, cool. And the, uh, the only other thing I got the TDP wise was that uh, color basic and extended system reference card. Um, still waiting for that to show up as well. So. Okay. Now that one had all the characters in color themselves too, right? All the symbols, all the semi-graphics blocks. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, I don't even think ours did. I don't think the Coco one had all the semi-graphics blocks in colors. I don't remember though. I have got a few of those somewhere. Um, yeah, this looks like it was from a like a third party. Um, okay. 
Yeah, there was a Coco third party one. I'm trying to remember the name of it because they made ones for the Model One, the Coco, and a bunch mm. of others that had full color. Yeah, I enjoyed that segment last week, the TDP talk. Um, I'm hoping that we, you know, I'm sure we're not going to have like tons of TDP revelations on a weekly basis, but as they sprinkle in, we definitely want to hear about them. Yeah, I, that neat. was fun. I appreciate Ron there too. This um, card, Curtis, is from um nano nano yes yeah. okay that's the same one that did the Coco okay so too. it was a third party card because it did yeah. seem a little bit more they used uh, to advertise visual. in rainbow they had a full color ad showing the various cards they made you know what it kind of reminds me of that we've that we've had a more of a recent but you could buy these kind of laminated cheat sheets like how to use excel and how to use word and there's a company that makes some of these like single sheets and bifold and trifold um, glossaries for like Microsoft Office products that are laminated. I can't remember the name of that company. But, hey, did uh, you ever see the one that uh, had a 6809 and the registers and everything and it had all the different commands and stuff and it would fold out? It was similar. Mm -mm. Yeah, like I a, think it's actually made by the same company. Reference company? Oh, okay. okay, that's cool. Is, is it like purple? Do you remember? I don't remember the color off the top of my head. They, they've made, like I said, they made a ton of them. They made some for... Model 1s, Model 3s, Model 2s, Cocos, TDPs. Might even yeah. have an MC10 one. I can't remember. I got a Model 4 one. Okay. How about we do this? We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back. And then if we got some more from John, we can hear some more from John Strong. we got some other things to talk about. Oh, there it is. That's the Paul Shoemaker Coco Breakout artwork. That's a neat thing there, too. That's suitable for framing. That looks good, John. Um, all right. So it, when we... When it, we when we come back, I, I didn't realize we were actually doing projects and updates and acquisitions and everything because I come in late because of my yeah, computer issues. So I'd, yeah, when okay. we come back, I actually do have something to share. If, if okay, time. well, so. the, we're, absolutely, absolutely, we'll come back to you. We'll come back to John Strong. I like to get a good round robin um, going, and then we can come back and circle back and do some more. Uh, so, in honor of Nick Morota's birthday, which we are celebrating today, which everyone should celebrate every day of the year. It should year. be a national holiday. It should honestly. be a national holiday. Every day should be Nick Morota Day. It has been mentioned for the last, like, 15 minutes. I was yes. getting a little concerned, so, you know. It's like... I'm not sure which nation would want to do that, but yes. So Samuel Gimes, you guys are all familiar with Samuel <laughs> oh, Gimes? Oh, yes. Samuel Gimes has been thinking and has come up with a new Coco thought. So enjoy this. <laughs> And now, Coco Thoughts by Samuel Gimes. Legend says, when the moon is full, if you go out in the country by the lake and whisper the name of Nick Morota three times, his spirit will appear and he will grant you a product idea. This Christmas, Tandy has a very special offer. A family color computer pack to take away at a very special price. This family computer comes complete with software and costs an incredible $449, a saving of $241.69. It's powerful, educational, and ideal for the young and young at heart. The easy way to start computing. The color computer family pack from Tandy. Get it while it's hot. Tandy, the biggest electronic store in Australia. As you start your journey to Coco Fest, you notice the road ahead is littered with rogue furniture. You realize you are driving on the Nightmare Highway. Nightmare Highway. The new game for the Tandy Color Computer 1, 2, and 3. Nightmare Highway. Nightmare Highway. Stunning low resolution visuals, digital to analog converted sound. 100% machine language and basic. What are they saying about Nightmare Highway? Nightmare Highway. Steve B. York says, of all the games released this year, this is one of them. L. Kurt S. Boyle says, this will not be on my site. Nick Marionette says, crikey, look at the size of that croc. Get your complimentary copy of Nightmare Highway. Nightmare Highway at cancanmakeit.com. If you got it for free, you paid too much. Coming soon. All situations depicted in this trailer actually happened. 
this true story has been anonymized to protect the guilty. Starting in the dead of winter, a group of bored teenagers blew stuff up, learned code cracking, learned phone freaking, hijacked and hacked. No system was safe. No one could catch them, or so they thought. story at the dawn of the internet system hacked and i think yeah i do i do need to update that one the system hacked is no longer coming soon system hacked is available i will need to re-edit that whole reel and i will get to that eventually <laughs> <laughs> and so Forrester Doom back. is coming November 27th. That's right, November 27th. Some year, sometime, somewhere. All right, well, we're back for round two. It only took us an hour to get into uh, introductions and, and acquisitions. So now for Thank hour you, two. Well, I, I had no idea what Coco Thoughts was going to be about. Thanks, Samuel. That was I didn't either. It's always a surprise. What was the little black thing that came down? <laughs> that was the Joey. Oh, the that, Joey. That was the yeah, Joey. Was the Joey box with cables. Yeah. Joey I had an idea with Joey, so that was, I think they understood their way of saying thank you for. Okay, for and we appreciate Ron Delvo. We appreciate your enthusiasm, and we appreciate John Strong sharing all of his stuff. So I didn't want to be rude, but it's too late. I already was, but we're back, <laughs> and um, we will go ahead now. And speaking of rude, we're going to hear from David O'Connor. <laughs> Where does that come from? <laughs> speaking of rude, but anyway, <laughs> <I'm just laughs> gonna, gonna, rude. Right. Here's David. Speaking of rude, <laughs> oh, you want me to be rude? I can be rude. <laughs> I don't think you got it. Rude. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think David has it in him. Why do we keep coming back every week? No, I, I know. With friends like this, who needs enemas? All right. So, Give it to uh, us, Dave. <laughs> Give it to uh, us. Dave, Dave's not here, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I, I don't think of a, a show. I think this arrived after last week's episode. I can't remember. I posted it on Facebook. But what I've been after for a while... Um, having gotten into my Coco One way back in the early 80s when I got my uh, original one brand new and got the uh, Getting Started and going, ex going Ahead books and sitting down with them. They were actually really well done. I was actually, you know, Tandy did a good job with those, Radio Shack. And so when I got my Coco Three recently, um, I downloaded the PDF version of the uh, Colour Computer Three extended book but I've never been one to, to really get into reading books via PDF. It's, right. it's always a bit sort of, yeah, you know, scroll through it on a screen and try and find pages. I like to have a physical book in front of me. Um, so I put a request out on the Facebook Coco group um, a couple of weeks ago, or well, maybe three weeks ago or something, to see if anybody had a uh, spare copy of the Coco 3 extended basic book so I can learn all the new stuff that we can do on the Coco 3s that I never had, you know, never got into in the day because I never had one. And lo and behold, Sheldon McDonald come to the party and I now have Ooh. a copy of yes. Color Computer 3 extended basic in all its, all its glory with all its... Uh, it is. Yeah program listings and everything so uh yeah that's that's a wonderful thing they are so wrong. yeah they Color absolutely wrong. are amazing books but i am also a little bit partial to the original ones for the coco one and two that were kind of the wide format um bigger books it was just yeah you yeah. know instead of the taller ones i liked the wider ones better for the coco one and two basic and extended basic um, yeah they were like that yeah 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 like, yeah. yeah so yeah um, like that. But it's still, it's a great, it's a well-written, well-illustrated, easy to follow, you know. And, and David, I was going to mention too, Nick Marode and I were seriously considering you sending you the French versions of the manuals. You know, as yes, as a, as a <laughs> I do have. <laughs> Les Coco Toi. I'd have to, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Look what I I'd just found do. on my bookshelf. Oh, look at that. Brian's got them all. Oh, look, well, there we go. <laughs> well, there's where they all went. <laughs> yeah. Wow, they're thick. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. 
I did. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I did learn French in, in high school, but that was many, many years ago. And my French is very, very rusty. About the only thing. Hmm, no, that's German. <laughs> I, remember more, <laughs> I can remember more German than I can French. <laughs> in, in, in France, I learned I learned French from listening to an old Steve Martin uh, routine. But a uh, chapeau means hat. <laughs> it's Before it's like they've got know. a yeah it's like they've got a different word for everything. <laughs> we all spoke French when we first got the Coco too. We would say, "What does the Coco do? What does the Coco do?" <laughs> <laughs> Ron made him funny. Yes, sorry. Um, cool. So that's your that's your uh, acquisition for the week is the Coco Three physical manuals. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah. And I, I, I'm Brian Weasler's mm. always got something good. Brian, uh, but uh, I do. Do you have Brian's topic that he posted on Facebook in the news, Curtis? Because that was a great discussion topic. I thought. Which uh, one was that? Uh, the one he posted where it's like, um, what do you regret about your Coco? Like, if you could change one thing, what would you have done or not done? Uh, oh no, I didn't put that in the news because, like you said, it's a discussion topic, and I didn't know if you had one pre-queued, so I didn't. No, 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 no. I just thought that was great. So yeah, maybe we can go ahead. Yeah, we, and we'll we piggyback that. on that. Um, so, no, I thought that was a great thing that Brian had. Brian, because it, it's just thinking mm. of books. You can't think of books and not think of Brian Weasler at this point. He's become the Coco librarian. He's really big into collecting the books, which is cool. I like it. Um, just shame, shame, shameful, shameful plug for uh, Coco Fest. Come to Coco Fest because you can get some really good deals on books. I mean, I've had I've had some years where I had so many ones that my, my I had to pay extra to fly my suitcase back, you know, because I had so many books I shoved in there, I weighed down the plane. So um, yeah, you can get books, books oh plenty and books oh cheap at uh, the uh, auction at Coco Fest. What I'm hoping he can get is the uh, Don and Kurt Inman uh, Tier City Assembly Language Graphics for the Color Computer uh, book, which is probably one of the better ones for showing how to do Coco One and Two graphics and sound, because that's what the book primarily focuses yeah. on, not you know learning how to is do math. Is that Rob stuff. Inman's? We, we've fellowship? asked; it's no relation. Um, <laughs> but if if he can get it, I'm hoping to get it scanned because it seems to be very rare, unfortunately. Yes, and yes. It's, I'd it's like to get a copy of that one too. So, which book was that? Don and Kurt Inman's uh, Something Language like Graphics for the Tier City Color Computer. It's got a kind of a yellow, green, and blue cover. That helps you. Be right back. No, if you have it, I got dibs. <laughs> I got dibs. Coco Librarian. I called dibs. Probably has four of them. Well, if he has four, then he's donate one to get scanned. Right. So while 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 Brian is doing that, uh, John Strong, did you have more? Sorry, I did cut you off, but you were you were showing us a lot. And I was getting overwhelmed and irritable. So um, grumpy. I'm grumpy. Yes. So and rude. <laughs> and rude. Uh, yeah. he's, 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 Why don't you put them on and go to the bathroom or something? Yeah. Yeah. So. I've got to see if this will 4K screen will share. Okay. Let me try it. Uh oh. Because this is like one of those commercials where they used to show you a television and you watched a commercial for a new television on your television and like. Does your TV look as good? And we're like, no, ours sucks. But gosh, you know. No, I'm looking at this on a black and white. What are you talking about? <laughs> I remember asking that question. I remember, I remember like when watching some TV show where it said, this show is in color. And I was like, I go, Mom, it says the show is in color. Why isn't it in color on this TV? Here? <laughs> Eat your peanut butter and show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Choosy moms choose Jeff. Well, oh. it's, it's hey, man, if you have some of this, it is. Oh, I have to stop sharing. Sorry, John strong yeah i was being very selfish okay i will now share i will now let you share he's concentrating look at i usually concentrate with by sticking my tongue out that's how i help concentrate i find i think we've seen that a lot on level one <laughs> we see that when you're walking through the show yeah. Okay, now I'm sharing. And you okay, see... John Strong has started screen sharing. We're still waiting, but it's coming okay. up. It might take a minute. It might 4K worth of data yeah, might take a long time. It up. Yeah, oh, Ooh, look at that. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. What oh, are we, we doing at here? That is. This looks that's, like the inside of a that's CPU. That's innards. innards. It's a chip die. Yeah. yeah. Is that the uh, I, I 6809? Found this on, yeah, it's a 6809. I found it out in the lab and it kind of enhanced the color to contrast a little bit. Now, let me ask you. I got a really dumb question. 
But that is a square picture, but the 6809 is rectangular. Does that is this just the kind of the core or the die that goes in the middle and the rest of that rectangle just like plastic? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. so that's uh, that always confused me. I saw a picture of the 6809 that was square, but the chip is rectangular, and I'm like, well, what's missing here? Uh, you can only put the pins. portion of it is for all the pins, right? Yeah, so that's all. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. The ceramic part is just a pin holder, basically. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's, that's the silicon and, uh, on there. Yeah, if you yeah, look at there. if you look at um if you look at a rum chip, the rum the rum chips with the little glass windows in them, and you can actually see the square inside e that glass window. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. E yeah, yeah, EPROMs. Yeah, sorry, EPROMs. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. And so, so I I found out in the answer. That um, looks really good. Okay. Yeah, that looks really good, the man. The other one I found is the 6847. That's the VDG, huh? Oh. Okay. Video now, chip. It, it does look like this one has been, when they decapped it, it's been scratched long here. Okay. But uh, not quite as good a damage as the other, but you can actually see the 6847. Now, can you see the correction we need to get a black border on the graphics screens? <laughs> <laughs> it's in there. Yeah, so uh, so not a T one. Uh, I have this is no a regular six eight forty seven. I'm presuming. Not yeah, the I'm, T1, I'm, right? ass I'm assuming that, but uh, yeah, there's you know, no, there's no lower case module in there. <laughs> you know, can't see any lower case characters there. And then you see the <laughs> Motorola emblem over here to to write on it. And so a guy from Vintage Teardown did this one. So that's, that's some there. tiny letters there then. MC sixty eight forty seven. Yeah, in the upper left. Oh yeah, yeah. very upper small left. silk yeah. silk screening. Yeah, and, and again, so, that's that's this is the actual core component that goes in the middle of that big rectangular piece yeah. of plastic that we're used to yeah. seeing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's so, actually the bit that does all the work. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. would you say that this is antique compared to the um, center of the new processors? We you know we have now. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, just yeah the new like ones are all micro-coated and stuff here. This is hardwired. The, uh, the uh, uh, gate density is tremendously uh, gr uh, less less density than on newer chips. So how, how much oh, yeah. magnification would you say there is here? Like 50 or 100? It depends on the size of your screen you're looking at it, Ron, Ron. <laughs> um, usually, <laughs> usually the cores, Ron, are, are only about three or four millimeters square. Yeah, yeah. You know, quarter inch, something like that. I don't have very yeah. big. So that's pretty common size. Okay, so it's not. It's you can usually you can tell by the you can tell by the pads on around the outsides of it. There's uh, in, uh, off each of those pads is a little fine wire, hmm. and that little fine wire, the black bit, that's usually less than the thickness of a human hair. Wow. Yeah. And, and that goes to each pin on the chip. That on goes the to the pins themselves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so that's just. Uh, I'm planning to make a poster of this. No, that's neat. For, available for people. And uh, 6809, is it in you? <laughs> that's cool. and so, oh, that is really colorful. And, so, uh, so the 6309 would look slightly different somehow? It would look quite different because it's micro-coded. Yes, the, the 6809 is the last one Motorola did that was actually hand-designed. Like they had, yeah. you know, like CAD type stuff where they did drafting to lay out where every single wire on there goes by hand design. Yeah. Whereas that after that, stopped? they started using micro coating, which is like basically reprogrammable, like mini FPGAs. When you say micro coating or coding, 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 coding like COD. Coding. So, um, so you could tell that some of the parts in this thing aren't quite level or straight, they're at angles, and it, it kind of looks well, like. Uh, well, here's the thing is they're, they're doing this with close up as with microscopes and then it's being stitched back together, okay, to make the full image. To, now, this to, was still a machine stuff. tool, though. There was not a human being hand wiring this stuff, right? Uh, no way. And, you know, <laughs> no. And, and uh, <laughs> so, uh, what Curtis is referring to, they, they would make a large mask, okay, that they would actually hand tape lines of tape on it. To indicate different there and they'd have these layers of these masks to do different parts of the chip and these would be on a large glass mask and then it would be photographically reduced and projected down to a really small size uh, on a, a recess on the the silica chip and then they do the diffusion of the different chemicals and, and stuff in there to create the different gates and so on 
So are they, we seeing memory on there, those squares or those rectangular things? Are those memory? You know, register I, memory would be the only memory on here. Yeah, the, you know, well, it'd be the, the ROM part for the uh, uh James, did you have that for here? <laughs> yeah, you'd have the ROM it, section for the character set. Yeah, and, and, you know, I'm not familiar with these enough. I, do, I see some regularly, you know, kind of areas that kind of look similar. And so something like that might be your ROMs, but I don't know, you know, enough so, about it to. Well, identify. the 6809 wouldn't have ROMs. The VDG would have the ROM character set on it. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, oh, okay, yeah. that's, okay, that's very, yeah, that's some very evenly patterned sections here, so. The, uh, so I'm not sure what they're doing there, but probably register. They'd be probably registers or something like that. Maybe the, the 16-bit yeah. registers. Uh, it could be their adders to do addressing and things like that. Yeah. If you if it's you want to see mm -hmm. kind of what what the design was like, if you go back to the original Byte magazines when they announced the 6809, they actually have pictures of them holding up the sheets of plastic, you know, giving the the map guideline of how these things are built. Ruby John was mentioning you can actually see them holding up like here's you know one little small corner of it. And it's wow. like, you know, three feet by four feet or something with just tons of wiring diagrams on it. Just to give you a, a, an idea of the difference between like a modern processor and this processor here, the 6809 had 9,000 transistors on it. The Intel Core i9, which is like their latest processor, has eight cores and its total transistor count is in the neighborhood of 1.736 billion transistors. Oh, wow. So there's the uh, order of magnitude larger. Several orders so of how is it magnitude. All <laughs> yeah. right. So how is it that we can only get under two megahertz on ours, and theirs is so billions of transistors, and they can go, you know, hundreds of gigahertz. Well, or, you know, uh, uh, there's, a lot of there's a lot smaller lower voltage, <laughs> lower voltage. For we're not, voltage we're also not going hundreds of gigahertz. We're going single digits of gigahertz. Well, what, you know, yeah, but you know yeah. what I'm. Yeah, because yeah. when you lower, because you have crosstalk for each one of these lines, okay? And so when you lower the voltage, you get less crosstalk. So that helps. Also less heat. <laughs> yes, that less heat. Right. Uh, if they'd be running those at the higher voltages, they would just melt down. So is the 6309 use less voltage? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, it's, no, no, it's, it's the same as 6809. Yeah. Uses yeah, less current, though, because it's yeah, uh, like CMOS instead current. of NMOS. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's that? Well, uh, explain the difference of that. Okay. One starts with the, the C. One starts with ah! the N. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, how dumb. <laughs> okay. Uh, if, if, if you compare it to water, okay, a water hole is okay. Uh, voltage is the pressure in your water line. Okay. Current is how much water can flow through your line. Okay. I'm with you so far. Okay. And so, uh, you know, you can have a lot of pressure in a line and, and just have a really small hole, okay? And so you can have just a little, a little tiny stream coming up, or you can have a fire hydrant, you got a whole lot of water coming out, okay? And it, it may not be as much pressure as that small hole, okay? So that's kind of the difference between voltage and, and the other. And together, okay. you can... To get the same wattage, you can change, you know, in a ratio between the voltage and the current and still maintain the same wattage. And so, uh, and that's why we the use other thing, AC instead of DC for house wire. The other thing that makes a massive difference to the current consumption and the speed of the chips too is, is the actual size of the transistors. If you think about how many more they're fitting in, not just the size of the transistors, but the electrical efficiency of them. Um, modern transistors on modern um, CPUs require far less current to switch them on and off than what old transistors do because they're much more efficient. Um, and even though there's a lot more of them, because they require so much less current, um, each transistor, um, if you have like like billions of the things and they dry, drain a fraction of the current of even one transistor on the old ones, then the whole chip will drain a lot less current and be able to operate a lot faster. So, and, you know, it says 68B09. What's the B? Faster than that, a 6809. That yeah, has two to be the rated. maximum speed. The maximum speed it's yeah. certified for. So, so yeah, and the E on the end of it, there's a 6809 and a 6809E. The E stands for external clock. So clock we have a we have a, we have a B yeah. hole and an A hole. 
There's a C also. <laughs> well, the C's, the C's who's on the, the uh, who's the a hole, Ron? Ron? I who's guess the I am. <laughs> Unexpected <laughs> humor from Ron Delvo. Oh, yes. Um, I, Stevie, can I share my screen for a second? I just found a picture from the original Byte magazine. Yeah, and John to will have the... to stop sharing his. Can you stop sharing, John? Or, yeah, yeah. Good job, now. John. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, let me see if I can me... stop that. Yeah, I'm trying to see how to do it because it's not showing me. Okay. I know there's a way. Stop to do video. It. Not video, but should be at the top there. View options. I'll share. Stop participant sharing. I got it for you. Okay. okay. I, I just found stop share, so I okay. Just... Go ahead, L Curtis. Okay, can you guys see that? I can see that. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Nice. So that that's what one of the one of the many many sheets that made up the six eight zero nine design look like, and they have to actually like hand draw all those to figure out what all has to connect to get gates connected, et cetera. And that was the last that's chip a, Motorola did that fashion. That looks like that's a massive task. Thing. That's a huge. You task. are now here. Yeah, you are here. Your data is here. Yeah, that's a, yeah. You're talking. And that's the uh, emulator board they used to test the chip design. You're, yeah. you're talking a difference of like back in the mid 70s, uh, they were between say six and three micrometers was the size of the traces on the board. Whereas today they're down into the like nano five to seven yeah. nanometers. The nanometer. Yeah. Which you're yeah. talking. Yeah. That's yeah. And that's a, a thousand times, times difference between, right? Yeah. Or is it a million? Um, nano let's see, micro. Yeah. And micro nano. So, micro yeah. nano is a, is a thousand. And then thousand nano times two. Far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, and the problem, Nano to Pico is another thousand. So, the, yeah. the problem, though, when you go, say, from three microns to two microns, it, it's a bigger jump than going from, say, three nanometers to two nanometers because it's a thousand times smaller. Every time you get smaller, your your jump is smaller as well, too. Yeah. So they're starting to bump mm -hmm. into, you know, okay, they're at, quantum, at 10 nanometers. Quantum effects and stuff, yeah. What's <laughs> the and, what's the big deal going to seven because you're you're only going three nanometers smaller, you know. Well, I believe... so back in the early days the jumps were big, but nowadays the jumps are small, and they're starting to do different technologies like stacking uh, transistors one on top of the other, and you know the so-called three D transistors. Basically, three D boards, three uh, D yeah chips. Yeah, exactly. So uh, to try and keep Moore's law going, you know, but they're they're literally physically running out of uh the capacity to make transistors physically smaller they're starting to hit the the right. wall limit, limit of physics i mean we're starting there to hit the limits, fact we've yeah. got atoms and electrons yeah, yeah. individually there, there jumping is, wires because they're so small there is hope yeah. though there is hope um i've just got this in but jason the coco man reichert of coco man.biz has figured out a way to have a, an adapter box that will connect the hadron collider to your cocoa, <laughs> and with the flip of a switch, you can start funneling electrons in either direction. Now, even um, more important than that, what Australian name is he using to describe this product? That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's, it's the, uh, you oh, know, it's crikey. the, uh, exactly. It's the crikey. <laughs> the crikey. The crikey. The quantum crikey. <laughs> the crikey. That's what the switch looks like. Look like. how many <laughs> poles are on that switch. Crikey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've hit this we hit this wall a couple times. We hit this wall in the in the Pentium uh, world when we were like Pentium one, Pentium two, Pentium three, Pentium four. Everybody thought there was going to be a, a Pentium five, or was am I saying that right? Pentiums, yeah, right. So remember oh, the Pentiums? Yes, yeah, so the Pentium four running around four gigahertz. That's when we hit our first wall because using that level of engineering, the laws of physics had couldn't be pushed. And, and, and then that's when they started getting into the core two duo line, which in 2005, where they said, okay, well, we're going to, now we're going from the old muscle car eight cylinder mentality to more of the hybrid where we're still going to reach the same speeds, but we're not going to do it with as much torque or whatever the case was. So, you know, it's been, it's constantly been a re-engineering of things because the laws of physics so far, we can't, we can't exceed those, right? So you can only make electricity travel so far before it either gets too hot or cross talks its neighbors. And there's all these other things that get in the way with circuit designs that the more you try to push it, eventually you're going to, you know, you're going to reach that. And, and the point. gigahertz limit is why a lot of the chips now are all multi-core to get it. Yeah. No extra just to get more yeah, performance out of the same parallel speed. processing as opposed to trying to yeah, get yeah, the yeah. same core running faster yeah. and faster. Right, yeah. because they're, you've, if you've noticed, they really haven't increased the speed much in the last 
what 10 yeah. 12 years or so yeah because when the core 2 duo first came out we went from a four gigahertz speed we actually reached three four gigahertz speeds on the pentium 4 line and then we went down to like 1.8 gigahertz so we, all of a sudden our speed went got cut in half because it was a whole new design and it took a while for that speed to come back up so it's kind of been this ebb and flow um you know it's just more cores yeah, and sort of hyper threading and throwing more cash at it and Hey, so didn't Jim Brain come up with a dual 6809 processor board or something? Yeah, Coco Proc, I think he calls it. Yeah, and the hop, I believe hop. the Australian name for that is the Didgerie Duo. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that work? Um, did they have to have a, a memory manager or some kind of a manager to go between the two? Yeah, or? Did, they, they share they static RAM, from what I remember correctly. Um, so they both can write to it simultaneously, but Jim would have to explain. I'm, that, I'm, that's hardware. I don't know that much. The, there um, was a shared RAM between the two on the on the board. I know that. The Fairlight CMI, the the, the Australian design big um, big uh, big uh, sampler of the of the eighties. It was on everything. It was on all Michael Jackson's hits. It was on all, all the biggest hits. Um, featured this Fairlight CMI musical instrument, and that had a dual core, or not dual core, but dual sixty eight oh nine CPUs in it. And they were selling for the price of a small house at the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Crikey. Fujitsu FM seven seventy seven computer actually had dual six eight oh nines back in the eighties too. The Japanese one. I just think about today's technology with you know the billions of transistors that we can put on a chip. I think if you wanted to put as many sixty eight you know at nine thousand transistors per CPU, think about how many you know sixty eight oh nines you could uh, cram on a modern die. <laughs> with uh, you probably you know, put a well, dozen on the head of a pin. Hey, uh, well, Brian, I mean, you look at look at what look at what you can do with an emulator. You know, you can run how many emulators could you run on one Windows computer or, or Mac or whatever? Right. Even on a phone, you could run multiple, multiple, multiple emulators at once. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Brian, the music man Shubring, did you find the book? The Ron and Don Inman, Don and Kurt Inman, assembly language, graphics and sound for the color computer. Because if you did, I called dibs on it. I want it. I want to buy it from you. No, I didn't. I I might have something stored away someplace else. This is what I found so far. Okay, what do you got? It sounds like he's calling from the Nightmare okay. Highway. OS9 is crap. You can throw that away. Did you find Inspector Gadget? <laughs> Stevie, being, Stevie being rude. <laughs> Stevie, can you zoom up the screen for the audience? Uh, let's do that. Let's. Well, let's. Let me spotlight. Hold on. You lose your you. lower third, there, Stevie. Okay, we're spotlighting you. Okay. Color oh, computer, assembly language, language and Coco Yeah, add that one. Yeah, yes, the William Martin, Martin Jr. Got, one. I've still got it. Got Coco Extravaganza. Yes. I, I might have, have something stuck, stuck somewhere else. I thought I had one with graphics on it. It's <laughs> kind of like this one here, but with the multicolors on it. Okay. Can you Over say Nightmare Highway for us? Yeah, can you say Nightmare <laughs> Highway? Yeah. Are you going to get... <laughs> <laughs> Nightmare Highway. Okay, hold that yeah. cue. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna make an announcement, and then when I'm done saying my Nightmare Highway, you're gonna say again in that voice. Okay, so hold on ready? one second. You ready? All right. So today, in honor of Nick Morota's birthday, if you go to the website can can make it dot com, copies of Nightmare Highway. Nightmare Highway are 100% free today celebrating Nick Morota's birthday. Thank you. All right. So. Awesome. Is that better? <laughs> yeah. Are you going to get us next time? I thought maybe you, needed a, I thought maybe you needed a lozenge. You needed a something. lozenge. You need a I'll lozenge. I'll get you there. next time, Gadget, next time. <laughs> Need a spittoon. I flipped the wrong switch. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that, made, that made for great. That made for great. Uh, great radio there. Yes, nightmare highway. Um, I hope you recorded that. Yeah, <laughs> someone has. The, uh, it's the, on YouTube. The, uh, so we NSA is listening into us right now. Hey, We're Paul, save it Pirelli's for our all. posterior. Okay. Okay, so we've gone around the room. We've yeah. talked about projects. We've talked about updates. We've talked about our hopes and dreams. Uh, have we mentioned today's Nick Morota's birthday? Have we mentioned that at all? Does, no, does no. anybody remember if I mentioned that? I don't uh, remember. Do we, have, do we have a tune to go along with that? Um, I'm not Happy sure. Happy birthday, Nick. Nick. We may or may not have a tune right now <laughs> for that. Alvin. Happy birthday, Nick Morota, to you. 
five dollar ukulele. Happy birthday, <laughs> Nick Mother F and Maroda. No, A happy birthday no. to That's you. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nick Marota's oh, birthday. Uh, Nick Marota. Shows friendship. Nick Marota. Nick Marota. Nick Marota. Nick Marota. Nick Marota. <laughs> All right. So we said it three times. That's beautiful. Name so nice. We must say it thrice. So yes, we, we are celebrating the birthday to... of Nick Marota. Uh, may so he does rest that mean in we're peace. Gonna sing... so. We're going to sing. We're going to sing "Happy Birthday" three times now. Yes. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Speaking of thrice and Steve Strobridge colloquialisms, last week I was watching uh, Saturday Night Live, and they had a sketch where I guess they were selling a British paint, and a woman kept pronouncing it "calor." Calor. The other person was like, "Are you pronouncing the U?" And she's like, "Yes, I am." Calor. Maybe think. Maybe think of Stevie. (laughs) Calor. We celebrate the Kalur computer, and we're not sorry either. So, um, hey Brian, you were supposed to be running that's audio. That's what it's all spe- about. Yeah, you were supposed to be running audio spectrum analyzer back there, Brian. What happened? You uh, all the kids are doing it. All the cool kids are doing it. Yeah, although hey, I, I'm a cool kid, but I'm even more cool. I'm doing acronoids. Ah, uh, acronoids, accolades. What are you doing there? You're acronoids. Doing, acronoids. Is that, some, is that what you take when you get an upset stomach? Hey, hey sure. kids, take, <laughs> take an acronoid. Too long watching the <laughs> program, the you'll get acronoids. <laughs> It means you can't sit down for a long time or something. That's right. You have to get some preparation. There's an ointment for that. (laughs) Doctor, I've got a bad case of aconoids. Yeah. Yeah, Go ahead, John. Hey, Hey, Stevie. There it is. There's the book I'm talking about. Yes, John. Mark Overholzer has it. Uh, Can I share a screen for a second? You can share a screen. Mark Overholzer, if you'd like to part with that book, I would love to be the recipient of it at some point in time. Not really, but I Don't take it from there. Scan it. Scan it at the very least. Scan it. Okay, really? go, go ahead, scan? John Lowry. John Lowry Already. is going to share. Today's the day of sharing. Scan here. Definitely uh, scan it. I'll be into a copy of that too if you scan it. Baby. Oh, uh, I'm going to have to quit and restart. I'll be right back. It's because you're running an Apple, dude. All right. <laughs> there he's got his, his Akinoids cartridge right there. There you go. Thank you. Simulated good. 3D. There you go. uh, well, when John Lowry comes back, we will... Um, we will uh, Look at that. Um, so we're going to go to news after that. What else can we do right now? Which book was that? Ken Reichert is asking. You want to hold it up again? Um, it is yeah, the, zoom up the screen. Uh, 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 yeah, assembly language graphics for the TRS-80 color computer by Don Inman and Kurt Inman. This is uh, what Curtis Boyle recommends if you want to learn how to make video games and you know game-specific graphic specific yeah, they do they do a kind of a mini space invaders the basis of a space invaders game in the book okay it shows you had to do moving the shapes and everything else too so okay. it's dotted your joystick sound and graphics that's what it's primarily focused on joystick sound and so graphics. That, so, so that hasn't been uh archived on the archive yet on the coco archive not that i remember seeing before unless mm. it's come up recently and i haven't checked recently but but the the yeah. two authors there they were a father-son team and they actually wrote articles for rainbow quite a bit too mm. Oh yeah, they wrote them for other stuff. I have them for the Apple also. They have one for the Apple too, as well. Yeah, no. If you're able to, if you're able to scan that, I'm sure there'd be a lot of people grateful in the Coco community. Absolutely. I didn't realize it had been scanned. Um, I don't really have a good scanner. You may have a good scanner. Okay. You know, uh, Tim got, Linder does. I've got a good. I've got a good scanner, but you'd have to post it to Australia. I could post <laughs> it back. Use reship or ship or whatever the thing we found does. Yeah, Mark yeah, Tim yeah, Linder, yeah. whom you've been to at the uh, West Coast right. Computer Fair, there. He's he's got good scanners. Okay, I might ship it to Tim Linder then. What does that say there? I can't. Joe... Uh, it says Joe Evans, Dayton Coco Users Group. Hmm. Okay, Stevie, okay. can I take a uh, screen share? Go ahead. You have you All have right. the comms, Mr. Sula. All righty. Uh, can you see my screen? I can see your screen. You have to see the show. Oh, it's okay. a show within a show right now. Mm. It is. Right. It's an inception. I'm, uh, that's what I wanted to show you. Is oh. uh, this is a forty pin chip that's about the size of a sixty eight oh, oh, I see. Yeah, and okay, that's so... the die itself. And oh, then so all we're only these... like forty power. So these are those wires that are coming off of it that make their way to the forty pins on the plastic piece or ceramic piece. That, that one's that one's actually ceramic with gold. Okay. So. Yeah, okay. you can actually the, just you with your the... naked eye you can see the different sections of the yeah, chip. Yeah, yeah. Modern chips you yeah. couldn't get that level of detail. I mean, you could see kind of different sections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, wouldn't yeah. have the level of detail that you see here. Um, but if I can, uh, where if was I that? could turn back time. 
If you turn that chip uh-huh. sideways, is it about halfway down in, in the plastic? Uh, what's that? The, the, oh, yeah. Uh, it's probably was. in the yeah, neighborhood yeah. of about, um, about I mean, halfway they, down. They say which two yeah. pieces of plastic. Yeah, here we go. This is similar to what John Strong was showing us before. Yeah. Um, so, like, uh, this picture here, I can tell you right here, this stuff around here, these are the registers around the bottom part here. And then this section here is going to be your decoder, which like when you do a load A instruction or something like that, that's being decoded in here. Well, how do you know that? Uh, from doing reading on how CPUs work. Oh, okay. The bits <laughs> around then, the, sorry, the, the, the bits around the bottom, <laughs> those diagonal bits around the bottom, they're actually the wires that come off the die and go to the to the, those, the, those the white other lines. to go to the legs. Yeah, yeah. Right, but these chunks right here are the actual registers. The oh, just the inside the wires. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah. yeah, I thought you were pointing yeah. to the wires. I thought, no, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And then this section here is going to be your your logic unit where all the the math is done. And that's neat. Yep. Yeah. I wonder if uh, you know how they when they show the brain and different parts of the brain light up yeah. when they're working. Yeah. I wonder if they've ever done that with uh, you know a CPU like that. They, they have. They've with done it with sixty five hundred two. In specific, they've done it with heat too. Uh, even on modern CPUs, they can kind of see like what parts of the chip are running most often. Just well, that would be awesome that would be a neat see, screensaver to that have like cool a CPU and a color mm-hmm. animated mm-hmm. CPU on your screen. Uh, you know? Or you can use a smoke method that Ron Delvo used on his Model Three. <laughs> there, that, well, that works too. Okay, he's, fine. These right. reefer caps. <laughs> it, it never happened. To smoke your any of my cocos. <laughs> well, here it is. Uh... You don't want to smoke that stuff, though. It'll kill you. <laughs> okay, this is the visual, visual 6502. Oh, wow. Look at that. Which you can actually... Uh, what they did, there's a really good article on YouTube where they showed how they built this. They decapped the chip, and then they literally took like a 3D, uh, a 3D modeling program and made each trace as a physical 3D element. And then they wound up building this Java 6502 emulator from it. Actually, runs uh, when you when you run it here. Cool, you can see there's numbers getting stored in various registers. It's actually going kind of fast. I don't know if there's a way to slow it down. That's pretty you, cool. You, can you tell that this uh, chip doesn't have as many transistors as the 6809? Uh, 6502, I'm not sure exactly how many it has. Yeah, it's, it's quite probably, a bit less than 689. It's more like a 6800. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's probably, mm. what, the neighborhood of half or so. Yeah. But you can see the actual, uh, my, you know, the code over here on the right-hand side. You can actually change it and execute your code. And wow. see that, parts of the chip light up. That A9, I believe, is load the A register. And then, so it's loading from memory location 2000. So see the 20 and then the 00, zero right there? Mm-hmm. That's a little endian where the smaller number comes first and then the, the most significant byte is second. Or bass so, backwards as we six at a and Motorola people call it. Right. <laughs> big endian. <laughs> the, the right way is big endian. So in a, you know, like in a color computer, Are the loading... Are referring to the Native up. American reference here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Indian, not Indian. Oh, okay. <laughs> so load the A register from the memory location 2000. I can tell you that's probably what that stands for because I was just watching a a, a Ben Eater uh, video and he was it, it involved the 6502 and I remember A9 stood for load the A register and so. Um, I'm not 100% sure if the A9 means load the A register from a memory location or with an immediate value. If it's an immediate value, it would be load A with zero. Uh, if it's load A from a memory location, it's going to be loading from the memory location 2000. I think that's what's going on there. Can, can you, you show us? Execute. Can you show us with your cursor where, where the origination of the smoke coming out would be? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stevie. Yeah. Yeah, I just found it. So uh, RetroAng added DIYBookScanner.org. Is that what you're going to tell me, Mark, or no? Uh, no, actually, this was about the term Big Indian and Little Indian. Okay. It comes from the book Gulliver's Travels about the people who eat the eggs from the large side or the small side. Oh, okay. I did not know that. I thought he was saying Indian, either. so, you know, My like, Big life Indian, has been Little Indian. Indian. And, 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 uh, and, Indian. 
Andy all I know is Big Andean is the right way. Yes, exactly. And Little Andean is the wrong way. Okay. Mainly because <laughs> the two processors I've worked on, the 6809 <laughs> and the Z80, are both Big Andean. And the 68000 series is Big Andean too. There's a reason yeah. for there's a reason on the 6502 why it's Little Indian. It requires uh, less cycles to load stuff in certain cases. Hmm. Oh, really? Huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we just had direct page to that. So yeah. wouldn't a Big Indian be a chief? That's what I was thinking. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, so just so you know, Mark Overholzer, so Retro Ang in the live chat was pointing us to a website called DIYBookScanner.org. Um, yes, I was looking that up. So that may or may not be helpful to you, but thanks for that share there. Retro you got to hold each, each page up to your uh, living room window. Yeah. Okay. This is the, uh, the video that, that I have watched. <laughs> That had led me to that Visual 6502. Okay. If you just look up Visual 6502. You can find this. Okay. Uh, it runs in Java. You can download it. And then there, if you watch, want to watch this YouTube video, this talks about how they did it. And it's about a, a little under an hour long video. Just look up uh, reverse engineering the Moss 6502. Yeah. If you ever have any difficulty sleeping, you can go ahead and put that on. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you were asked, somebody was asking earlier about the number of transistors. From what that's yeah. saying, the, the 6502 is 3,510, and the 6809 had like 9,000, so we had three times as many transistors. Wow. Yeah. Hurrah. Crazy. Uh, Isn't that something? Hurrah. Yeah, and what was the, uh, like, 4,004? <laughs> Less than 6502, wasn't it? It's only four <laughs> Terry Steen says, just for fun, I'm building a 6309 using relays and vacuum tubes. I'm getting 800 <laughs> amp servers installed at my house to run it. <laughs> 800 amps is at all. I think you would have named like 800, 800 megawatts or something. Hey, Amigos Retro Gaming just joined us. What's going on, guys? The all Intel right. 4004, hey, essentially the first CPU, 2300 transistors. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was like what about 300 this, what about, transistors. What about the Z80? Is that listed in there? Uh, <laughs> Paul, Paul Fiscarelli says he's building a 6809 out of redstone. So that would be interesting to see a 6809 in Minecraft, huh? So, uh, uh, number of transistors in the Z80. Make sure you pronounce it properly Z80. 4.5K. Well, the Z80 had 8,500. <laughs> I don't know about the Z80. The what? The what did he say? What? <laughs> Z, 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 I delivered Z, it in my Z. Z28 car too. So. Have you ever it's listened not... to that group with the beards called ZZ Z, 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 Top? Z, 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 Top. Yeah. 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 That's the Australian version. So how do you say the number seven? Z Bottom. How do you say the number seven with the bar on it? That's the yeah. seven. Seven. It's a seven. It's the, the Australian, yeah. the Australian ZZ top. They play didgeridoos instead of guitars. <laughs> really going crazy about a sharp dress kangaroo. <laughs> wouldn't, it be, <laughs> wouldn't it be didgeridoo? Didgeridoo. All right, yeah. all right. So enough transistor talk. Let's move on to something more exciting. Uh, good well, stuff. This is pretty exciting. Come on. Is now. it really? Where's what? What does Ronnie Chong have to say about all this? Uh, I don't, yeah, how do I man. stop sharing? I don't think he cares, man. I don't think he cares. Joyce is smoke, man. <laughs> but I didn't inhale, man. All right. Oh, so man. we're going to run a commercial break. Commercial, and then we're going to be back with news from news, uh, let's, let's 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 make an executive to the yeah, I'll, I'll officially put the rest of you to sleep now if okay. anybody's still awake so executive decision <laughs> so brian weasler had the topic of uh coco uh, what is it called hold on let's look it up in discord under our news topic and suggestions in discord brian also posted that uh news topic is suggestions let's pull up the link it was from, my goodness, there's just way too much content in here. I can't keep up with it. Is this news topic? Uh, this is, no, that's host discussion. Hold on. We have, we have a separate chat room for that. We have news topic and suggestions. This Are you saying in. there's too many chat rooms? Yeah, we have too much going on in Discord. Okay. So, too much to do. So this was it here from our friend, your friend and our friend, Brian Weasler. So this was the topic he posted on Facebook where he says, okay, Coco Time Machine, if you could go back in time, I'm, I hear Cher in the back of my head right now. <laughs> if you could go back in time Sharing um, is caring. and do something different in your Coco history, what oh, would yes. it be? He goes, I'm not looking for things like change the history of Tandy. 
but just you, like, I wish I would have kept that book or device. I wish I could have learned or finished that. Uh, uh, for me, it would be learning assembly language programming. So that is the this, this host discussion topic. So my question to you, when we come back from commercial break, would you like to do that discussion first or news first? Because after that, we're out of show, folks. So I'd like to do the discussion first. You'd like to do that? Is that okay? So L. Curtis vote. But it's, While it, people are still awake. Uh, it is Nick. <laughs> it is Nick Marota's birthday. The universe revolves around him. What would Nick Marota like to do when we come back from the break? I, I do like hearing my name, apparently. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I think the discussion topic next is cool. I like close it with news. Okay. Okay. I thought Nick was going to say, you know, we don't need a discussion topic and we don't need news. Let's just talk about him for. Yeah. Longer. See, you mis you misunderstand me. Like, I'm, that's... <laughs> yeah, I'm smoking my sharpie, man. Hey, man. <laughs> so. <laughs> As we celebrate the birthday of Nick Maroda. Um, okay, so we're going to take a break. What are we going to break with? What are we going to break with? We're going to break with... A, a Kit Kat. Well, if uh, we're up to me... What? If, was up we to Nick? A, if I get a choice, I like Fletcher. Okay, well, the birthday boy wants Fletcher, so we're going to Fletcher. Hi, this is Chris Boyle, part of the uh, Coco Tech crew of people. Hey everybody, this is Bill Noble, co-author of Nitrous 9. You are listening to Coco Talk Live, the leading live Coco Talk show. Good day, mates. This is Nick Marionettes, author of such color computer titles as Donut Disaster, Rupert Rhymes, and Rockstar Pilot. And I am here today to tell you about the world's most fabulous operating system, OS9. OS9 and its current incarnation Nitrous 9 is the most advanced operating system ever created. And what makes it so good? Ease of use. I find OS9 so incredibly intuitive that I haven't once cracked open the user manual. And yet I've been able to create such incredible games faster than the time it takes to sing Walsing Matilda. Using OS 9, I expect my next game, Funstar, will be done this weekend and distributed exclusively on ROM cartridge. OS 9 forever. Any resemblance to actual events, to persons living or dead, is purely coincidental. Radio Shack has a great gift idea for the whole family. Fast action TV games, and they're on sale. Get this six game model for $29.95, or the four game model for $21.95 with rising entertainment cost. That's a real bargain. You play hockey, tennis, squash, and more. Easy to hook up and great family fun that last all year long. The sale price TV games. Only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. Hi there, this is Mark Overholzer, and you're watching Coco Talk, the world's leading weekly talk show where you can join in. Hey, come watch us and see what's happening in the world of Coco. Coco Talk is brought to you in part by Placeblex Dietary Supplement. Placeblex, we think it works, so will you. Un ordinateur couleur qui a de la personnalité. Le Coco 2 de Radio Sac. On solde pour Noël à partir de 149,95. Coco 2 de Radio Sac, ton affaire est dans le sac, c'est toi. Hello, this is Grant Leedy with Coco Talk. Got your Coco 3 yet? From the makers of the Switcheroo. <laughs> Wallaby Cable, Color Computer 3 Dual RGB Cable. Get yours today at cocoman.biz. Fletcher, I don't need that report tomorrow. Great, JT. I need it tonight. 
But, J.T. Fletcher saved $300 on her office away from the office. Radio Shack's revolutionary Model 100 computer. It's a word processor, phone directory, and dialer. It even communicates with the office computer. Fletcher, how's that report? Fletcher. Radio Shack's Model 100. Save $300 and put it to work. You'll go far, Fletcher. <laughs> You'll go far. We now return you to Coco Talk. His name is JT, man. All right, well, this is just <laughs> in. This is just in. Apparently, there's been a new commercial for the Joey that I did not know about, and I didn't get a chance to update in my broadcast software. So we're going to do it live here. I'm just going to pull it up and run it. You're sure. Tired of switching your joystick on, between the it. left and right port? Hold on a second. It showed up on the wrong screen. Here we go. Jason, this isn't the red label version of the commercial, is it? Yeah, this one's suitable for broadcast. Okay. This is the world premiere of the Joey commercial, folks. Tired of switching your joystick between the left and right port? Want to change between different controllers? Well, Joey has got you covered. The Joey controller switch. Take control of your controllers with the flip of... Uh-oh. Yep. The flip oh. of what? <laughs> we'll never oh. know. I'm having, <laughs> I'm having, I'm having serious problems with my Google Drive. Um, sorry about that. To be continued. To be You'll continued. Never, it's when, not. It's not driving too well. Oh, you yeah, know what? Not. I. I oh. No. He's not here, man. It's the flip of a. <laughs> it's the flip of two switches, I believe. Where's Dave, man? <laughs> He's yeah. not here. No. Man. It's a flip of two switches. All right. Not so, here. so the the host discussion topic was uh, Coco Time Machine. If you could turn back time, uh, what do you wish you would have changed or done or not done differently? Um, that is the discussion topic. Who would like to go first and share their Coco regrets with us all? <laughs> you want to just go around the panel in order? Or what? Uh, that sounds far too organized for me. I prefer chaos. How about we start <laughs> with the uh, How about we start with the birthday boy? Because the world does begin and end with Nick Marota. Nick Marota. Nick Marota. Uh, Nick Marota. Do you have any Coco uh, <sighs> turn back time? If I could only, should have only, could have, should have, yeah. would have. Considering I had pretty much almost everything that we've talked about in the show in terms of old hardware and that, I got rid of everything really stupidly, and I regret it to this day because I had to multi-pack. And anything you could name almost, I, I, I seem to have acquired and uh, just got rid of it all. And it, I, to, the, to the point where I actually dreamed. I had night, like dreams at night through the years. Mm -hmm. I still had my Coco, so I regretted it that much. So I haven't yeah. gotten new white cocos now. Those dreams have stopped. So I mean, I'm, I'm happy that I'm back in the cocoa world, but I'm still gonna regret that I got rid of all that other stuff. Absolutely. But who knew that you guys were gonna be, you know, 40 years in the future? We're gonna have another uh, resurgence of cocoa activity. Like you can't predict that. So, but I'm glad. I'm glad that it's. I'm glad that uh, we're here. Yeah, Sean Ernst Absolutely. just joined us. Totally. So Nick regrets getting rid of his physical cocoa inventory. Yes. Um, what about Before we go on the next one, I just want to mention a, a really good joke I thought that uh, Tim Franklin put in when I made the, the earlier comment about okay. it being the red label version. He goes, okay. if it's a red label version, just press reset until it's blue. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, that works. Or hold down <laughs> F1 if, you, uh, if you're in a cocoa three, yeah. trois. Cocoa yeah. Um, Rondel Vo, you've got lots yes. of things. You probably you have more I have inventory more. I, than you more probably than a, have I, regrets. But I have you... more than a human being should be allowed to have. He regrets <laughs> not having a bigger okay. garage. I think. That's but what I, can say. I might say that back in the day, back in the '80s, I had a model uh, one that was gray. You've probably seen pictures of it, and um, I took it and put it into a DT, you know, a model four at a terminal empty shell okay. put it in there i had it working i put a black and white tv in it and I, you know it had drives and it worked and it was cool and then one day um <clears throat> i was carrying it out to the truck for something to go to the computer show or club meeting or something and it i dropped it 
and it, and the and the case bit my hand and i had like 15 stitches in my Ouch. hand from that sucker so it was uh. bleeding like mad you could see the inside of my hand it was Ow. terrible oh, so fire. i have a yes. color computer injury <laughs> okay, on that, my hand how did the cocoa it. fare though did the cocoa survive the drop yeah the important well, part of this is how did i, I, just, I yeah. put it i put it in the garage <laughs> for a mm. long while and didn't mess with it and it wound up getting flooded and i had to throw it away ah. because it got ruined oh. but i wish i had that again still you know even yeah. with my collection of things it would have been neat to have and to share with others and so on. But um, otherwise, I still have I have lots of Cocos. I've always used my machines. I never regretted uh, keeping them all these years. And um, eventually, probably as I grow old and bent over and can't do things anymore, maybe I'll have to get... Ron, Ron's not here, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. wow. You never know. What about Stay Mark friends. D. Overholzer? Even if it's not cocoa related, I'm sure you have some. If I could turn back time, what would I have done differently? And, uh, uh, I do have one small cocoa one. I've only been in the cocoa since 2012. I mean, I, I got this cocoa three new in box with an Apple IIe Platinum and a bunch of games. That's why I kind of got into the cocoa. Um, but there is one thing. I had an offer at one point to get a high res joystick adapter from somebody for a very reasonable price, and I never followed up on it. But mm. big one, the big one that I let get away. I bought back in the 80s, I had bought an Apple IIe in the early 80s and then a Commodore SX64 portable. And then I got an Apple IIc with the monitor and a, and a case. And then I picked up a portable case. The Apple IIc is real interesting in that the power supply is not built in. It actually uh, is external. And so I found this thing called the Prairie Power Pack, which was a lead acid battery that would power the Apple IIc. So it was portable. Huh. And I also got the flat screen for the Apple, the Apple flat screen, which is kind of squished vertically. It's half height. But anyway, so I had a complete portable Apple IIc setup and then a monitor for home. I wound up selling it <laughs> on a commission so I could fund my first IBM PC. Mm. So really regret getting rid of the Apple IIc with the flat screen. Interesting. Do I have the and, IBM, though? Um, actually, no. It died in a house fire uh, in 2005, unfortunately. Well, the spirit of his keyboard lives on with you. Yep. We hear you know, a, a house fire is very traumatic. My sister had it one. Is. And uh, it's a tough thing. Uh, sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, I, well, I, mm. I had actually moved out of there, long out of there, but I left some stuff there. I just never cleaned it all up. Mm. So I also left, lost all my 45 uh, uh, records. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, oh. And, uh, oh, and the other thing that I really missed, I, a friend of mine had given me this uh, Intel development system. It was a big blue box with eight-inch floppies. It was called uh, MDS. Uh, I think it was the MDS. Uh, anyway, it was a development system. It had like a 8085 and an 8086 in it and cross compilers and assemblers for all kinds of stuff. It was for development system that was mm. scrapped. And uh, it was really, it was like a, it was like a big blue box with a screen and a keyboard and a built in eight inch floppy and then two external floppies and a whole box of discs. It's like, that would be a very cool piece of equipment to have. So you lost that yeah. in the fire? Yeah, I lost that too. Oh, yeah. gee. That'd be pretty rare too, that one. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. What about L. Curtis? If you could turn back time. Well, I'm all depressed now. Um, <laughs> yeah, what kind of birthday is this? <laughs> Whose idea was this? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Our fearless leader. For, for the most part, I don't have any regrets. I mean, the Cocos treated me quite well. I got my career out of it. Uh, we got to run the Cocoa to work for a decade and an extra year or two past that. Um, the one regret, I guess, is that I didn't get into OS9 and assembly language in OS9 specifically until when I did, which would have been about 86, 87. If I'd learned it a little bit earlier when the level one and the Cocoa one was out, I might have been involved with the level two upgrade because all the big OS9 gurus at the time, and there was about you know a dozen of them, joined together with Tandy and Microware to do the upgrade that never got released because Tandy then canceled it. Mm -hmm. But if I'd been part of that group and had access to all that, then when we did get the 609 Nitrous 9, I could have just straight ported it with overlapping windows and everything else instead of having to reverse engineer the whole darn thing again like we're doing now. So uh, that's one regret. If I'd, if I'd been into that a little bit earlier, I might have been able to join that group and you know, Nitrous 9 would be years ahead of where it is now. Hmm. So uh, what does involve, you know, in, in simple terms to a degree, if you can, in uh, reverse engineering, like you're saying? what, what... Disassembling and, and figuring out how they did things or trying to do a clean room implementation, figure out what they did, not look at their code, and then just figure out an alternate way or my own way of doing uh, it type of thing. So 
but they had so much stuff done. They had vector fonts and all kinds of things in there that uh, aren't in Nitrous 9 yet. Some stuff is, but yeah, it's uh, it would have been years ahead of where it is now. Interesting, interesting. Uh, what about uh, David O'Connor? Um, probably, t yeah, two two little things. Uh, well, one bigger thing and one little thing. The little thing, I wish I had kept the Coco One box that I had, and not thrown that out. Kept the original <laughs> box with the foam inserts and all the packaging and all the rest. But uh, um, yeah, but the main thing. Um, around the uh, mid to the late 80s, we, uh, Dad got a 286 and I started getting into Microsoft DOS and all the rest of it. And uh, I should have stuck with the Coco and gotten into uh, gotten more into assembly language. I was actually, I started getting into assembly and started writing some stuff in assembly, but I never really delved deeply into it. Um, I, you know, I got right into basic and did a heap of stuff with basic. Um, but yeah, really, I, I, and fortunately now I do have the opportunity to go back and, and I'm digging my, uh, uh, digging my brain cells into, uh, assembly language now. So, uh, yeah, but if I had a, kept going with assembly language back then, um, I probably would have been way ahead now and, and been writing my step sequencer program and all the other stuff that I'm doing now in, in assembly instead of writing it in basic. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably my only real regret. I've still got my original Coco one that's which is awesome. running behind me right now. Yeah. But David, do you yeah. you don't really need speed, do you, when you're doing it with that stuff? It depends. Um, for what for what I'm doing with the sequencer, I'm getting away with basic right now for most tempos, but I want to make it interactive where I can actually change things in real time as it's playing. And I want to be able to, you know, call up keyboard interrupts and stuff like that and have external controllers coming in and, and changing the tempo of it and, and things like that would benefit from writing things in assembly. So instead of using like in key commands for, for, for keyboard interrupts, which take a lot of cycles mm. and reading the joystick ports, you know, that takes quite a lot in basic to, to do. Are, basic are you going to have a, a graphical thing going on while you're doing this too in the future? Oh yeah. I I will. Yeah, I'm actually working there. Yeah. I'm actually working on the, uh, that, the one that was running in the background now is simply just a test of a proof of concept. And I was working <laughs> on getting the timing right in basic to make sure it's, it's rock solid timing wise. Uh, but now that I've got that figured out, I'm actually starting work on the a much more complex version. Um, I, I will put some interactive features in that, um, even using basic. I think I can get away with making it interactive and still making it useful and, and accurate. But, uh, yeah, so that's probably my only real regret is not digging more into assembly back in the day. Very cool. What about Brian, the music man? Regrets, regrets, regrets. It doesn't have to be regrets, I guess. Right? I don't really have any regrets other than the fact that uh, I stayed more on the periphery of things and not so much mainstream in that I was, I like to be more of the, shall we say, the user and see what I can hack and uh, making things work. That That's more of my uh, mojo. Um, but otherwise... Uh, was uh, using OS 9 one of your regrets? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not come on hey man you don't want to be stepping on my high <laughs> so, so did you use the cocoa uh with your um you know ham stuff uh i did a little bit um let's see cocoa 2 mostly um the cocoa 3 a little bit i wrote some code actually for transmitting morse code just by using the relay um for keying the transmitter you could only go just so fast, so you can only go about, oh, 50 characters a minute <laughs> before the relay starts really going a little wonky. Uh, then you, a good you, way to wear your relay up. <laughs> well, I was out, oh, yeah, I was banging, banging the relay and that, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, we fax and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I had also gotten into, uh, you know, Linux a bit and, uh, you know, of course, regular uh, PC and that. So I was doing more of that stuff there because... Some of the things that I that you can do with uh, digital modes, uh, the Coco really can't keep up easily uh, for decoding certain signals and that properly, and that. But other other than that, um, I wish I had documented more of the stuff that I've got. Can't find it all now. Hmm. What do you mean documented? Like inventory? Uh, saying, yeah, an inventory. Exactly. I've got a lot of stuff back here. That stuff that you can't see that I got stored and stuff and some in boxes and such. 
And so, so when you go looking for stuff, you find other stuff, and then you never go get the stuff you were looking for because, hey, I just found this really cool thing. <laughs> exactly. He's like, oh, and here's a plug. Anybody who's got, I think I got some Daisy Wheel. Um, I've got a whole bunch of um, old printer ink cartridges still sealed. Wow. wow. And oh, I mean, I, found, I went dumpster diving uh, about 15, 18 years ago, and some company out in Arlington Heights was <laughs> Throwing all the stuff out, I dumpster diving. I grabbed a whole bunch of cartridges and other stuff. So, do you mention be- this now that the statute of limitations has lapsed on this? Of course. <laughs> well, hey, it was in a public area in the parking lot. It was not inside. It was of well the lit. Store. It was well. It was lit. well lit, were, and, were... and it was an open container. There Whenever you, you dumpster dive, you're supposed <laughs> to take two people, one to hold your ankles. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It had and a door must, that sp- open up and um, walk in. It was one of those. <laughs> and if it's mm. and if it's cocoa related, you have to take a fire extinguisher to put out the dumpster fire. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, I did not let the smoke out. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, Terry Steen <laughs> says um, Terry Steen, uh, by author of Balloon Fire, Grey Lady, and Mrs. Pack, among other great hits. Um, Terry says, uh, "I hate that I walked away from the cocoa for MS DOS and Mac." Later, I found that my cocoa coding helped me uh, more in doing microcontroller programming than anything. The ARM isn't much different. Um, then Tim Franklin says, "No regrets here. The cocoa got me my first engineering job, designing and programming machine controls using the 6809." Uh, <laughs> Terry cool, says, cool. "We should make a Toy Story movie for the cocoa. The cocoa, oh, MPI, great. joysticks, etc. All freak out." When Andy goes off to college, <laughs> no, I couldn't uh, watch that. Yeah, right. <laughs> no way. Um, yeah, so it doesn't have to be, I guess, necessarily regrets. But what, what, if you could turn back time, going back to your life from the cocoa to today, what do you, what would you have changed if you could? And how about John Lowry? Any cocoa? Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I kind of touched on it last week when I was talking about Rick Adams about it, because I was asking him about, you know, what he had actually done to get published by, you know, Tandy. Yeah. And uh, now that I think back, you know, looking back, if I would have stuck out some of the projects I was working on back in the day, finished them and submitted them, you know, there's pretty good likely, you know, other people had done it. So, you know, maybe they, maybe what I had done, uh, back in the day, if I would have completed those projects and turned them in, because even if I would have completed them, I would have never thought, you know, hey, let me submit this to Tandy. I wouldn't like like Rick was saying, I, you know, who do you call? Who do you write? You know, how do you yeah. get this done? Uh, but I yeah, I think that would have been the, the, the one if you want to call it a regret or thing that I wish I would have done. It would have been to, uh, uh, you know, stick out my projects to the end and submit them to Tandy and maybe have gotten published. What did you try going to open up your Cocoa browser and surfing over to RadioShack.com and submit an inquiry that way? <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if only <laughs> RadioShack.com and the you know I think Radio the World Wide Web on and all that stuff. When I remember, but mm. <laughs> that, yeah, I think there was. So finish these projects and present them here. Yeah, well, yeah. We'll tear them apart. Yeah, but all yeah, that yeah. got lost at one point in time. Uh, so yeah, anything I did would, I would have to start from scratch, which is not too difficult because I mean, I never, never got so far into it that it's like, Oh, all that work that I did is gone. It's like, well, you know, all the preliminary work for a, a bunch of different projects is gone. Uh, but you know, so all right. I, I know cool. there's one person here who's got little to no regrets. Cause when you think of his introduction as seen at PenFest 99 and 2000 at Korgscon, Hamvention, uh, at Coco Fest, at Tandy Assembly, creator of the Switcheroo, the Wallaby, the Joey. I mean, the game man's got more accolades than uh, than uh, Alcatoids or whatever that game was. The Al- <laughs> Al- 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 Alkanoid, Arkanoid, Alkanoids. Uh, Alkanoids that uh, Alkatoid was playing there. Chest, um, Jason, you, there's very little things you'd want to change in your nearly perfect life, but <laughs> stretch your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> 
Regrets, yes. <laughs> I've had a few. But then again, <laughs> I, <mentioned. laughs> yes. I, was wondering I did what I had to that. do and saw it through without exception. Uh-huh. Aren't most of them uh, people with the you have? Uh, hey, Frank. Hey, how hey, you doing, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. Um, he did it his way. Yes. Um, yep. Uh, you know, uh, get it, it really... Uh, one of the few regrets I have, because I, I still have a lot of the stuff I had. I still have my original Coco, Coco 2. Uh, virtually all the tapes and uh, discs that I had from back in the day was nice because I was actually able to recover some stuff for my brother that he uh, then finished and released. Uh, but uh, uh, some of the hardware, I mean, uh, you know, I, I had multiple multi packs at one time, and over the years, you know, things got just some things that got sold off over the years. And when I got back into it, I realized some of the stuff that I had kept was kind of iffy, but now I'm able to fix it. And uh, it's not so bad, although I do. Uh, I mean, one regret from back in the day is my original Coco 3, I ended up destroying. I uh, I, I probably plugged a multi-pack, blew, up, blew the CPU. And at that time, my soldering skills were not very good. And I ended up ruining that Coco 3. And I, I at the time, I just went ahead and got a Coco 3 used from you know, one of the classified papers or something, and I continued on, but uh, I had that motherboard for the longest time, and I, I think I must have thrown it out because I can't find it now. I'd actually like to go back and try to fix it. Soap powder, I hear, works really good on these things. Oh, that's that was that it makes it really clean, but <laughs> um, that's, that's really all I got. I mean, okay. I. I wish I would have submitted more things. I mean, I only got like the the one thing from, you know, through T&D back in the day. But other than that, I just. Uh, Did yeah. you and your brother ever uh, argue back and forth when you were younger and had your machines? And I mean, did you guys always pretty much get along and. Argue as far as what? As far as who's know, going like, to get to use the Coco? Like I've got this game and he wants a copy of it and you're not going to let him. And... Cat has oh, that, no that, just, that just sounds perfect, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, no, not really. A lot of times he would write something, an adventure game or something, and want me to test it. Uh, oh, I think more cool. of anything, there were you know there was maybe arguments over who was who was going to use the uh, Coco at that particular point, as far as you know, computer time. Uh, why did you only have one between you? Yeah, we just had the, we just had the one. Uh, so oh. between my my brother and I and my my dad. My dad actually would do some work for his work at the time. He worked in a, in a hospital in a, uh, and you know, in the lab, and uh, they would, he would write up procedures for things they did in the lab and print them out on like a TP10 in script set. Wow. And, and I think he would he would he would take them and paste them to pages and columns, and then take them to work and photocopy them uh, so they would go in a notebook, but. Uh, and, did, uh, if your did, father had a shortwave radio, yeah. He did he ever something. have a blast with the new math tutor? No, not not as far <laughs> as I know. And then there was there was but a joint I have my effort. shortwave. Yeah, <laughs> there was a, a joint effort where he, my brother did write a program for there was some type of statistic uh, analysis for for work that he would do on the Coco at one point. Interesting. But, uh, Interesting. Yeah. Well, well, another cool. Another guy we know has no regrets because he's got pop star money and soon to be having gun star money too. Nick Morentis, <laughs> if you could change anything, would it be just to be more rich and more famous at this point, or? <laughs> oh well, change, you know, the, no. change the cars you bought maybe with your all the. Money I, I, I wish I had learned OS nine. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Man. I wish it's that not too. too late. It's too late. <laughs> Could have some help. Easier to use than ever. (laughs) No, that that was bullshit. Um, (laughs) Grade A. Yeah, we know. Uh, I don't don't, don't really have any regrets. Um, I was perfect. I did everything right. Um, (laughs) You you did it your way. I think think, uh, (laughs) it's not so much a regret, but I think back in 1980, when I first got my my first computer, the TRS-80 Model 1, which I enjoyed. I, I wrote several programs and all that. But if uh, if there's any regret I have, I wish I had bought a color computer in 1980. It was a brand new computer then. I should have bought the color computer, not the TRS-80 Model 1, which was already 
whatever, three years, three years old, old at that time. Yeah. Now, you know, I spent time and learned how to program it, did some pretty good games for that, but the market was dead by then. So then in 1984, I got my color computer. But if I had the color computer in 1980, that was when the, you know, the Coco was just, just yeah, starting up and became been a pioneer. Yeah. So had I written any games for that, I may have then really got maybe four Ferraris. <laughs> <laughs> do you still have your Model 1? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But it's not yeah. set up. Uh, it's on a display stand. It's not powered up, no. But, but I do it's... still have the Model 1. Oh, cool. And it's well, sitting next these, to... One these thing 91%, I think... three Ferraris isn't enough. It's got to have four. <laughs> really so, 1%. What did well, you there's have still room it? in my drawers. I could fit another <laughs> two or three, really. So... <laughs> Well, what did you have with it? It was just the keyboard monitor and at, paper cards? At the time, that's all I had. It was a, the keyboard, part, sec, the, the main computer and a monitor. No disk drives. I developed uh, about half a dozen commercial grade games from cassette. Wow. And that was in that, in that four-year period, which, you know, I liked it. I didn't, I didn't, no regrets in using the Model 1. But, yeah, it, it, I, I should have got a color computer. Because uh, it was a brand new machine in 1980, and no one else had, you know, any programs at that, that point. So had I learned to use that, I could have had a lot of games uh, marketed um, then, rather than starting a bit later. One, one thing I always wondered, Nick, is if you regretted, or you know, kind of in this this theme here, is regretted not submitting your programs not just to Tandy Australia, but also to Tandy in the states, so you could have been. You know, North America oh, distributed and everything. Yes else. and no, but remember back the 1980, I was still in high school. I was in grade what we call here grade nine, I think it was, or grade eight even uh, high school. So I was just a kid. I didn't know, you know, talking to a big company to sell my games. I had I had dreams of trying to to sell my stuff you know, just by myself at the user group, for example. Um, yeah. No, no, I'm talking more like when you got into the Coco because you actually did have Donut Dilemma and some of your games sold through Radio Shack, but only in Australia. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was I was still in high school at that point as well. And, of course, there was no internet. I didn't know who to talk to. Um, I only just sent it to the Australian Tandy head office as a, you know, I, di I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. And it just, they, they came, What I submitted Donut Dilemma. And, uh, yeah, they came back and said, yes, we'll take it. And I, that was when it all started for me. But Yeah. Well, I, I, just wondered, like, I just wondering if you had a regret that you could have you could have gone beyond just Australia's borders and sent it up to... Uh, I don't know if Tandy were back then in Australia anyway, uh, were actually accepting software. Most of the software they sold here in Australia came from the U.S. anyway. It was only in 86 with the Coco 3 did they actually start showing an interest to uh, take on some Australian locally produced products. And I just happened to submit my program at the right time and they picked it up. Um, earlier than that, I would have had gone straight to the US maybe, but I was only a kid then. I had no idea how to contact. Uh, yeah. Um, I just said your, your games were commercial grade enough even your earlier ones that even if the model had one ones them to were, yeah. in, in the u.s they probably would have distributed it in the uk yeah, and yeah. Canada oh, I guess, and the states yeah yeah i was i was a kid i wasn't i wasn't quite greedy yet <laughs> man if times changed yeah i know <laughs> what did you wind up doing for a living as you got three, older three ferraris later I actually did start working in a Tandy store initially. When I finished school, I went in, into Tandy, was a salesman, a con man. So, uh, <laughs> well, not, not so much a con man. I, <laughs> it put me, it put me, <laughs> at least I was selling products I believed in, like the color computers and the, and, uh, yeah, the Tandy computers. So, yeah, I wasn't a con man yet. <laughs> So were you able to get stuff on fixed it. if you broke it? <laughs> Sorry? Were you able to get stuff fixed if you broke it? Oh, uh, I was learning to, yeah, yeah. 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 But, yeah, that was my yeah. only real, I guess, regret in that I should have got a color computer instead of a Model 1. I might have gotten further. Well, what did you mm. wind up doing after your Tandy days? Did you become a 
Oh, mm. after that, no, I got a job. Um, well, I was in retail for some time. I moved from Tandy to a, another chain store. When Tandy got rid of their color computer, basically, I moved to another chain that was selling, well, apart from PCs, also were selling Amigas, which was my, my second love. So I was selling uh, Amigas uh, uh, for a while, but eventually, I think in 80, 95, I got a job at a museum. I actually became an IT support officer. Did right. you ever wear that white paper hat at the Tandy Electronics store like the guy in the commercial did? No, no, no. I don't know where they got that from. I wish I had one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find one for you. We'll send it. There's your regret. You never had a paper hat. so They, yeah, they have fun. those all the time here in uh, food preparation stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we can find something for you. And Stevie, well, how about that you was yourself? A, yeah, I was going to wait for tax yeah, I was going to let Nick finish. Um, yeah, I finished. <laughs> um, I just want to say, Curtis, do you have a lot of news? Uh, I have a fair bit, yeah. Okay. Well, Only because I mean, hold I'm, some of it I, off. Well, or... no, I'm just I'm starting to get a little bit of a headache, so I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be able to hold out. I'll I'll well, share. I'll keep my story brief, and then I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ron. Were you going to say something? Uh, make a break. Go get some aspirin. Come back. We're good. No, no. I mean, I, I need I need a break. I like I need to stop hosting the show soon. I'm just I I need I'm gonna have to do that soon. So, um. But I'll, um. So what what are some of my regrets? I would definitely say not learning assembly. Like I think a lot of us we should have learned assembly. It never dawned on me that I could even learn it as a kid or that I should have. I just figured that's what the grown ups did. I didn't realize half the stuff was that was out there written in assembly was written by other teenagers too, and never it just. To me, it was like, okay, basic is for kids, assembly is for adults. That's just what my simple mind, that's how I perceive the world, right? As a matter of fact, I I didn't even realize there was different versions of assembly for every processor. I just thought assembly was a language, like basic is a language. So I was hoping that when I went to college for programming, I was going to learn assembly in college. Like, no, we don't teach assembly. And they, wouldn't, they definitely wouldn't have taught in 6809 assembly. You know, so I was just really disappointed. I thought, now that I'm in college and I'm out of school and I'm ready to enter the world as an adult, I'm going to learn assembly. And then I'll make that awesome Coco game I always wanted to make, you know. So definitely have that regret. Um, I did write some interesting programs. I wish I would have submitted them somewhere so they would have been preserved like Rainbow or anything else. So um, I, I had... All of my original floppies up until probably 1990. I still had the plastic filing case with all my floppies, and I let somebody borrow it, and that guy got evicted and lost all of his stuff, including my spare Coco 2 and my all the floppies of everything I'd ever written in my lifetime that nobody but maybe me and two friends ever saw, you know, or some people at a club meeting. So I, I mean, I just wrote tons of software. I wrote games. I wrote demos. I wrote stuff for the xpad for the koala pad i mean i just done we a friend i had a collaborator i had a, a friend who would draw the graphics in graphicom and then i would do demos based on his graphics and um we had like animations and like i was playing music because you, you could use uh, musica to play a file through basic you could just like launch the like the jukebox player and play a single song so like i had a a guy moonwalking and i had like the, the michael jackson theme song playing and it's all kinds of stuff that we did really cool demos so i have tons of stuff that i would love to look at these floppies and just look at them i'm sure a lot of stuff i would cringe but a lot of stuff i would look at and say man that was really cool that i did this when i was a kid i had zero clue and I did this, this, and this, you know. So I just, I just remember all the things I did, and I couldn't begin to know where to start to redo all those things. So I, I do regret missing um, those floppies, and not learning assembly. Um, never going to a rainbow fest. Obviously, never occurred to me that I could. I, I mean, there's no way I could have afforded a, a flight in a hotel. My parents wouldn't send me there by myself. So you know, there's no way I could have gone to a rainbow fest by myself as a teenager. So. Um, that would have been cool to see. Obviously, Coco Fest, missing out on 24 years of Coco Fest. Um, and I would say, too, I do regret um, some even more recently. I do regret, unfortunately, some times where we have not uh, been polite to each other in our communications, like through social media and stuff. So I know there's times where I have not always been nice. Um, and I regret that. So bringing it even more to the present. So. Um, I think I'll end it there. It does, I'm sure there's a million things we're going to remember did, did later you, on. Did you want to apologize right now? 
Um, <laughs> no, because that would be an admission of guilt and or a sign of weakness. Uh, <laughs> but let's just say uh, I, I, can... <laughs> I, do, I do regret not always being polite when I possibly could have done a better job. Like even I this episode, all, you were rude. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that, David? I think we've all put our foot in it in that manner sometime. I've yeah. done that myself, even on the even on certain groups or whatnot. I've said things. I think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I forgive so. you, Stevie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, screw you, Nick. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> oh. party's over, sucker. We're gonna uh, have a sorry moment here. We're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. We're, we're, sorry. we're, we're, we're all, all sorry. Canadian. Please accept my apology. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but we're yeah, all gonna, we're all gonna do it on. We're all going to do it on three. One, two, three. We're, We're sorry. sorry. Wow, that was really good. Um, <laughs> the sorry episode, isn't it? Yes. All right. So how about then Jim we group hug. group up? So why don't we then jump into news? We're going to let L. Curtis Boyle take it away with everything that's happening in the world of retro. Um, and I'm sure there's been a lot since last week i do want to say we broke a lot of records last week on last week's show uh attendance wise we had probably the most live we had over 40 live views consistently through the show we broke 100 views the same day of the show we've broken 200 views by like monday um so last week's show was a lot of fun uh and we i think we just broke a lot of records for not having somebody like um the 8-bit guy on i think we did pretty good right so uh, um, terry steggy What's that now? Was that Terry Steggy? Terry Steggy was here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So last week's show was a great show. To this week, um, you know, I was actually even considering maybe not hosting the show just because of some of my own little personal traumas that I'm going through. But then I said to myself, you know what? The the amount of fun that we had last week and the fact that we get together and laugh. I mean, this is really this is the best remedy for whatever ails you in life. Getting together and having this good time for 19 hours straight. Um, <laughs> all that you, you went ahead and took a placebo. Yeah, Paul Fiskro says I regret spending the last hour listening to this drivel. <laughs> Mr. I'm hopefully, I'm hopefully you know, not as elevated as I was last week. I was a little bit excited about the whole Joey thing coming out. Yeah, uh, well, that's I've why since, we had to have you lower your chair. I've since enrolled in rehab, and things went much better. <laughs> Oh, speaking of that, how about oh, this? You were how good last be- week. You were on fire last week. <laughs> before, before we do that, before we do the news, how about we do this? Because somebody sent me the YouTube link to the Joey commercial. So how about we do it proper since my Google Drive has Tired issues. of switching your joystick so between nice. the left and right port? Want to change between different controllers? <laughs> well, <laughs> Joey has got you covered. The Joey Controller Switch. Take control of your controllers with the flip of two switches. Order today at cocoman.biz. Joey? I see red, green, and blue, but I don't hear red, green, and blue. Yeah, well, it was playing, and you guys just (laughs) conveniently talked over the whole damn thing, but that's okay. Mm. That's okay. Yeah, I didn't. I don't oh, have did we... audio sharing because Curtis is about ready to share. Oh, uh, that's okay. It's okay. Listen, it's a professional show run by amateurs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'll have to say we're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I didn't realize our voices were interrupting it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we do have news then. Uh, yes. Yes, we do have news. So now, L. Curtis Boyle, L. Curtis is going to tell us what's new and exciting this week. <laughs> Okay, let me know if the sharing's coming through. Sharing is coming through. Sharing is caring. Oh, I see a Windows desktop. Who's sharing? QMIDI on Windows. (laughs) Better than (laughs) Leslie. (laughs) Okay, the first story here. Sheldon McDonald put up a video for using QMIDI for Windows to create music to play on the Coco with the GMC cartridge, which he's been kind of, you know, doing some stuff on. So he kind of goes through here, uh, showing how he sets this up. So QMIDI is what? That's not a Cocoa program, I take it? No, it's a Windows program, but he's using it to create files specifically for the GMC. Okay. The driver Zoom that he's is doing. showing. Sorry, what? There's a Zoom showing. Is it mine? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it must be me. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so he's showing. So he's it's local. 
So what yeah. he's so doing kind of goes is... through the details here of how to do the recording. He's got a sample track he's doing with multi voices. You can see. Okay. And he's then me back doing stuff in MIDI. And of course, we can't hear your audio at all. So just so you know. My you, audio. Are or you the... sharing? We can't hear your audio at all. So if you're sharing audio, we can't hear it. Okay. Why is that? We're not hearing the audio from the video you're from showing. From the video you're playing. Saying. So when you share, make sure you yeah, share Yeah, we can audio, hear so. your audio. What? Yeah, but not your video. We can hear you speaking. We can Curtis. hear your microphone, yeah. but not the uh, shared audio. Okay. Yep. Let me try that again then here. Al Curtis is sharing. This time with feeling. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's better. Now we can hear it. I wish it would default to that. Sorry, that's just some you know sample music he's doing. And then he... Kicks it over to the Coco side of things. Uh, recording this video and and that's his Qmidi player, which kind of slow. handles the playing of these file zero. exports. Um, so as soon as it loads, and it, like before, he has it running in the background. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, it does. Hmm. But it's a nice tool because this way you don't have to like do pokes and peaks and you know, design yeah. your own data files. Yeah. You can just use yeah. you know off the shelf tools and away you go. Yeah. While we're on that and subject, I just wanna I wanna throw out there because um, speaking of when I mentioned you know sometimes we have regrets about how we engage online. Um, you know, I, one of my most recent heated uh, discussions was just getting into um, things, but the core of that discussion was. Um, Somebody mentioned, well, we need more software for hardware. And I think we got into it later on that night, too. And one of the things I mentioned was, um, yeah, it's, it's helpful if we have documentation and we have tools. And I, and by me mentioning one person that did have some good tools, I may, you know, it's, it's making one of these, what do they call that, an, an inclusive statement when you say, well, so-and-so does this. You're kind of almost saying, but nobody else is, you know, even though you're not. So, so on that note, I do want to make sure since... Uh, this was part of a thread that had to do with the Coco Crew podcast. So I want to make sure I acknowledge, yes, the Game Master cartridge has got great documentation, always has. Even though I didn't say it didn't have great documentation, I was mentioning a different product saying, yeah, you know, the Coco VGA has got great tools. So I didn't say that. Um, also, on that same note, um, you know, I know John Linville has recently done a video where he, he's modifying the play command to play for his Game Master cartridge. And I believe this month on the Coco Crew podcast, his tech segment is even telling you how to hack the play command or how to extend the play command. So I want to make sure I don't not only neglect to mention something, but also maybe recognize that on this one sound product that also Sheldon's been doing great work with this too. But John Re Linville has recently done a couple of videos um, on the GMC. So Yeah, and we covered uh, one or two of them. I think either last week or the week before yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, great pun, um, Steve. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. So I the, love hearing so the this hack stuff. That the, so the hack they were talking about for was that spe, uh, for the play command? Was that specific to the GMC, or could it be applied well, to other? Well, the one he showed the YouTube video on was specific to the GMC, but his tech segment, which I haven't listened to, but if you look in the show notes of the show, the tech segment this month has something to do with modifying the play command. So there might be some some nuggets in there you could use to. Yeah, the Do technique it. definitely can be used in some of the other mm, sound mm. cards. I mean, his implementation yeah. is specific to the GMC because, of course, that's his card and he knows it the best. So yeah, 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 yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. As Steve says, on that note. <laughs> on that note, no, but so Sheldon's doing a lot of good stuff. So listen, ideally, we had this, we had this conversation. It's great to have tools. It's great to have training wheels for certain things, but it's not necessarily the responsibility of the hardware vendor to spoon feed us how to interface with their product. Whatever documentation and tools and, and demo programs we can get are great, but there needs to be some realistic expectations. So we want to make sure we don't uh, inadvertently have our wish list become a turnoff to these guys who are developing the hardware because they might stop making stuff if we stop complaining about it, right? So we want to try to find that balance. But uh, on the other side, you have do, we have talented people like Sheldon who's writing these utilities that at the end of the day, anybody will be able to use. And so we want to recognize those folks too, because this is uber useful here, this kind of interrupt driven background sound player, you know? Yeah. Sorry. Agreed. Sorry, Curtis. It's all about mm. me. We forgot about Nick Marotta. Remember, it's Nick Marotta's birthday. Sorry, Nick. I stepped on your toes. Um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. My only regret is that Sheldon didn't have a happy birthday demo here. So Yeah. <laughs> 
And then also sticking with Sheldon for a bit here, he's also got an update to his GMC cartridge design <clears throat> where he's uh, got the audio out jack built in and he's changed the insert to be a bit be a bit stronger. Uh, let's see if I can zoom this up a bit here. That's neat. So this is like the 3D modeling of it, but... Uh, Wow, that is a neat looking cartridge. It's even got the little musical notes on there too, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah, his I am joining his joysticks. Mm. Yeah. It's not every day you find somebody that's on the level of John Strong that knows how to make hardware and software and provides their own 3D printed cases. That's a unique combination. It's a rare and special gift to have all of those talents, you know. Yeah, I'm rare and special too, but in a totally different way that's not all that <laughs> And then Bill Pierce, uh, we went through the whole, you know, 512K video RAM thing when he did his little 2 meg demo. Now he's got one that is demonstrating horizontal and vertical uh, scrolling. This got, one takes uh, one digital, meg. Now it's this... got digital cat audio too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's... Um, Basically, like if these aren't done to be efficient. This is just him learning how the hardware and the hardware scrolling works. So uh -huh. this is doing just the, the two different, you know, scrolling two different directions. Yeah, my cat says, my cat says, sorry. Yeah, this is, he's giving Nick Marionettes <laughs> a run for his money here. See, it almost looks like Gunstar first. <laughs> Gun Except stop. this one's higher res, so it's better. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, I love the panning, but he's basically, he's loaded all of this image data into RAM. So there's really no room left to make a game at this point. Right. Or is that true? Well, statement? he's down to one meg now. So he's got okay. another meg on a two meg machine to do some game code, but yeah, okay. no, it's, it's not efficient. Like Nick, Nick's right, fit because this too. is all pure raw data. Whereas if you have a yeah. tile set, you can really minimize the amount of RAM needed. Right. So, yeah. And like I said, so like I said, is... Bill's just learning assembly. Oh, it's, oh, it's amazingly like impressive. This, this is, this is just to learn. He, he knows he's not going to write a game using the specific method. Yeah. It's just that he's learning how the hardware works. No, it's super smooth. It's really cool Proof looking. Of the, the Testing art, yeah. yeah, it does look cool. This yeah. is like NES or better looking quality here. Yeah, it looks great. Absolutely. It's amazing what you can do with only 16 colors, you know? Yeah, it is. That's great work. Look forward to seeing more from Bill on that. If that, if that uh, had some gameplay, that would have sold well in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Even the nineties, or even the two thousand. Even the two thousand. Graphics, yeah. graphics are beautiful. But now he's got competition from Nick with Gunstar, so it'll never go anywhere. No, Gun, well, the, the price is right now. <laughs> yeah, right. The price is right. <laughs> uh, next up, I've got my batch of Dragon videos for the week, and like I've I said, been enjoying these. Yeah, like I've said in the past, this is not everyone he's put up. He's put out a ton of adventure games and stuff, which it's a little bit boring to watch uh, over and over because they're all different adventure games. But the games themselves are actually quite good, so. Please feel free to hit his, his uh, page. That's uh, Pet Sass Jim One P E T S A S J I M One on YouTube. It rolls right off the tongue. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> so this here is a game called Fruity, which is a slot machine simulator. Oh, Nino. Yeah. Where does he start? This is where we speak dragon. Hello. Yeah. Welcome to another tutorial on how to run software on the computer. <laughs> Today we're playing a game called Fruity. It's a rather nice game. Okay. It's, it's, and you can Quite. have a cup of tea a <laughs> When does the fruity get fruity? There we go. This is neat. You got the little pound symbol there. Is that what the E is? Is that the pound? With the yep, euro the symbol? Yeah. Pound. Yeah. Real money, I think they call it. But... But not a bad for a PMO3 game. Not at all. Ooh, it even passes gas like this. Um, <laughs> now, what is that little um, puzzle thing up in the corner? Is this like putting together things? Well, if you, if, like have a, you ever played in Vegas style? Because they've got the slots where you get the line across, but if you add more coins, you can get diagonal lines count too and vertical oh, lines I count. See. So it's, I see. Depending on how many coins you put in, some of those lines actually apply to the winners. Oh, I see what's happening there. That's just a re-representing... <laughs> Yeah. Okay. One thing I like is that he's got, you get three dragons, and it's the actual dragon data symbol. Yeah, the, the dragon symbol is cool. <laughs> yeah, and on the title screen, too, that was cool. Yeah. Sounds a little bit annoying, but it's actually pretty, it's neat. pretty decent. Yeah, yeah, that is cool. I like that one. So there's your payouts. 
Okay. Now this is a bit of a unique one he did. He actually like he's using MAME for all these these uh, emulations to he's not run using all these dragon games. That's blasphemy. Dragon. Well, in this particular case, I don't know if X War supports the Dragon Professional Alpha, which was a dragon that never got fully released. Oh, like five or six oh, prototypes. Wow. Three times speakers, six bit binary weighted DAC, a one bit DAC. Wow, yep. AY chip. It had an AY chip. Programmable yep. sound Built-in floppy drives, two dual three and a half inch drives. A three twenty by two forty mode. This thing would have been a beast. <laughs> eight 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 megahertz. That's the boot screen. Oh, okay. When you turn the machine on, did you want to use basic or do you want to start using discs oh that actually boot God, straight to OS nine? That is awesome. Yeah, you could boot straight into dis. Now they made the basic, basically the standard Dragon basic for compatibility with Dragon mm -hmm. sixty four and Dragon thirty two. But if you had disk, you could instantly boot up anything. And at night, or OS 9 was actually one of the things that we're planning on pushing with support for the sound chips and everything else built in. Oh, my goodness. So I don't think there's too much here because he doesn't have all the rest of it. But uh... So is this is there a game we're going to see, or is this just showing off the machine? No, this is just showing off the, the ROM because ah. the name is actually emulating the Dragon Alpha. Oh, wow. The, I didn't even know this existed. That is cool. It's got like a whole BIOS screen here, a whole loader screen. Yep. That is amazing. How to insert impressive. your disc? <laughs> yeah, a little pictures here. Yeah. That huh. is amazingly impressive. And I don't know if you yeah. had anything else. I'm just trying to remember if it's. We need to make this. Jim Brain needs to make this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and nobody will write software for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's Snyder thing. Or it's not a, yeah. It's yeah. Snyder thing. He can tack it on right after the uh, Cocoa 3 Plus. Yeah, right. yeah. You can build it into the Cocoa 3 Plus. Yeah, could you actually? But uh, the next one here is uh, called Galleons. It's by Wizard Software in <laughs> '82. This is a uh, kind of a battleship style game. And I th if I remember, it's written in BASIC. I love lots and lots of screens of text before you start playing a game. It really turns me on. And he does this nice fancy graphic oh, here. That is you know, cool. Galleon. That Nicely is really drawn. cool. And then it's back to text for the actual game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. It's Battleship. Yeah, you basically. sank my Battleship. I say, old chop. I, I just found it interesting that he, he wrote a basic game, and the Battleship game itself is pretty good as far as yeah. Battleship games go, but he does this fancy you know, graphic screen, and then it's right back to text for yes, the actual yes. game. <laughs> That's because that was all the rage back then, is your graphic splash screen. Yes. Yeah. No oh my. Now this one's interesting. This one's called Ghost Attack. Now it's it's basically computerware's pack attack. Okay. But they changed the colors around compared to the original Coco version. Okay. And I'm not sure why they did that. Okay. To make it better. Ghost like they redid attack. the name because okay. that's Ghost a pack attack. attack. Okay, this was the this was the semi graphics version. Yeah. Oh, this one was good as it was. Oh, what? a green maze instead of a blue maze. Yeah, like I'm, I don't know why they did that. I don't either. Because the mm. blue maze was very arcade correct. Yeah, exactly. I love that sound effect. That was the most iconic sound of... Uh, that yeah. was not. <laughs> that woo-woo. -woo. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. a pretty cool sound effect when it did it, but uh, the dying sound just grated me. It was like fingers on a chalkboard. And this sound ended up getting recycled in many, many games. Yes. Especially for computerware, because it was the same program that did them. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting that they had it renamed yeah. and the colors changed. Now, and keep, otherwise, keep, it's identical. Keep that pause for just a second, because this is a great example of semi-graphics. You see right here where the text is and where the text ends. And right underneath the text, we have that green line. Yeah. That would not be yep. possible in your normal text mode. So this is like an SG24, right? This is the, yes. the 192. And this is exactly what Audio Spectrum Analyzer did too. So when you have those numbers right underneath the numbers, the rest of it is, has been blocked off. So we're not really wasting all that 8 by 12 character frame. We're slapping graphics up in there. Um, and um, so you're making the maximum use of the screen real estate, which is a very cool effect there. So um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you can see the semi graphics too with the thin lines all throughout yeah, the maze. Yeah, yeah, that that was the the best part about this is you had 192 vertical lines with eight colors, colors. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, and you so. didn't have to have font <laughs> data either. I mean, if you wanted to do text on the screen, you just drew the different scan lines for the text that already built in, so you didn't have to build in fonts. You could free up memory for your game. Hey, we just got a tip, Michael 
Pitsley just tipped five dollars. Thanks for the tip. Somebody used the the donate link. Thank you, Michael. Cool. Um, cool, cool, cool. That is cool, though. I like it. And actually, the semi graphics mode is the reason that Nick Marenti's got into the Coco. Actually, he wasn't too impressed with the uh, black and white and P mode three stuff because they didn't have artifacting in Australia at the time with PAL. And this is the reason mm. he decided to get a Coco, right, Nick? <sighs> <laughs> yeah it was <laughs> oh it's not oh, he's, it's he's not. getting too many carbon monoxide fumes from his ferraris right now folks <clears throat> this here is a, a game of golf and we had a bunch of these now i know the amigos guys were looking for golf games during one of their live streams and actually nick and i were kind of discussing it i don't think we ever had a really good golf game on the coco or dragon can anybody name one? I don't think there's such thing as a good golf game, to be honest with you. I don't know. It's just not, it's just not my... I don't know. Even watching was, it live is boring. There was boring, some so. mini golf, but... Yeah. I can remember the mini golf that was in Rainbow. Oh, wow. This is cool. This is graphical. Okay. Yeah. And the guy actually... He, it took a while for him to figure out how to play it, but you actually can swing your club and it actually does animate that. Now, do you guys hear just a little piece of trivia? Do you know what golf originally stood for? Gentlemen only, ladies for business. That's right. Gentlemen only, ladies for It was a boys club. It was the original boys club. was golf, right? A way to get away from the woomers. An impressive saber he has there. <laughs> I'm, glad you, I'm glad you said what that was because yes. I was wondering. It's not the size of the <laughs> stick. It's how you swing it. So. He's not just swinging in the wind, folks. Star, Star Wars golf. Yes. <laughs> Addressing the ball. But I mean, most of the games I've seen of golf have all been Coco 1 and 2. There's one mini golf for the Coco yeah. 3, which basically was a report of the Coco 1 one. Um, and then I think Prickly Pear did one that had some assembly called Tee Off, but that's about the best one I, I remember. And, and none of them are very good compared to what some of the other platforms, even at the time, had. I'm just going to so I'm, I'm play Nick Morota here. I'm going to throw out an idea, free idea to whoever wants to develop this, but full contact golf with a horde of a zombie apocalypse coming at you <laughs> while you play the game. That'll make it interesting. <laughs> just make sure it only has one level so Stevie can play it. <laughs> Jerry Young says it looks a little bit like uh, Atari 2600. Okay, Salamander Software presents. I like the checkerboard background. Is this going to be a racing game? Very good. In basic. Mm. Poor, man. Poor Amanda, what do we have to sell? With awesome sound. We've got a couple of grand pricks on this show, too. Hi, <laughs> 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 Dave's not. And this is not to be confused, confused with Computerware's uh, Morocco Grand Prix. So. Okay. <laughs> There's eight tracks, too, which is nice. Um, My but car's got eight tracks, too. <laughs> yeah, my, my cassette deck is downstairs. <laughs> and with handling. Uh, the thing is, that this this basically draws an overview of the of the track, and then you just steer a dot around it, basically. Okay. So it's it's not like. Uh, super okay, fancy. well, let's see it though. Okay, that's cool. The it's arrows, written in basic, so it's the it's arrows pointing the direction, obviously. Oh, Amigo Retro Gaming uh, says, try Ninja Golf on the Atari 7800 Ninjas instead of Zombies, but it's still Death Golf. <laughs> there you go. you got to keep it interesting, you know? Yeah. I, I, I've got to check that out now because yeah. I'm intrigued. Uh-oh, we went off Oops. the track. We went off it somewhere. Yeah. Commiserations. <laughs> but some of the other tracks actually get a bit Turn more left. sophisticated. Yeah. Turn left. Fast forward. I like, I like how they're doing the whole checkerboard motif there with everything. That's pretty cool visually. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, what is the steering mechanism? Is it cabord or is it joystick? Joystick. Okay. Joystick. All right. Yeah. All right. What so really col what, what, color, what color were the joysticks on the Dragoon? Um, they were black, but they were that odd. You've, you've got were some. They, were they a dark color of, of uh, attractive significance? <laughs> they, they were not pastel, like in the <laughs> graphics mode. So. They beautiful. Oh, steering. oh no. Steering. Spit out. Ooh. Look at that. Look at that. He, n there we go. Skidded around the edge. <laughs> yeah, I like... Um, accelerate, accelerate. You got the timer going up okay. to the top too. Yeah, not bad no, this for basic actually. No, no, the track Breaking. looks cool. The track looks four very wheel cool. drift. <laughs> okay, grid runner salamander software. They're cranking out the hits. This salamander yeah. software, huh? Now, designed by oh. Jeff Minter, uh, Nick pointed out to me that uh, we've seen a few Jeff Minter. Now, Jeff Minter is still famous in games. He does games for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox even nowadays. Ooh. Um, but he did stuff for the Commodore 64 and the Sinclair Spectrum and the ZX81 and a ton of other machines. Like, I, I took a look at some of the stuff he'd done, and it, he's done, like, at least a dozen, two dozen machines 
uh, home computers and, and video game systems. So he's quite famous, and he's he's a guy from the UK, and he started on you know the older eight bits like the Dragon and the, the ZX. So this one was actually ported by somebody else based on a game he'd done for one of the other platforms. And it kind of reminds me of Neutroid in oh, some ways, wow. but it's kind of that. a centipede mixed with Neutroid, I guess. I don't know what you want to call it. But... I'm wondering what... Yeah, this That's is cool. really unusual. But this is actually a cross-platform game. This game is available probably in about four or five other platforms in the time, too. So. And none of them other than the Coco are using this puke pink color here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Puyan color set, as we like to call oh, it. Oh, you know? God, it they hurts did the because eyes. They could. I just want to stab my eyes with a blunt object right now. It's just... This is why the Coco VGA was created, folks. Yes. You can change all this. Mind you, with the Coco 3, you can change it through the palette command, too. So. Yeah. That's a cool-looking concept for a game. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next up, Henry Wrightfeld put up a video showing playing Canyon Climber, loading it off floppy from a real floppy drive. The twist is it's an 8-inch floppy, not a 5 and a quarter, not a 3 and a half. Super retro. Let's play Canyon Climber on my Coco 3 using a floppy disk. It's certified. Floppy disk. It's, it's certified. Giganto. Yeah. yeah, it's Giganto. <laughs> so before we Those do are that, Model 2 floppy disks. We have to make the disk. Oh, more games. Drive. They hold like 12 bytes. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's an I even think it's number. 90K. So he actually creates... So he takes a disk image formats the floppy and you had to do some hardware mods because the spin rate is a little bit different on eight inch drive so you had to do some mods but uh he copies it over and then actually loads the game off the eight inch floppy drive and so what's he, is he copying speed. so he's copying from the coco stc to the floppy drive there yeah, yeah. so he's basically yeah. got disc extended color basic plugged into an eight inch drive yeah and it recognizes it yeah and it works because of the 360 versus 300 rpm and all the differences there there's canyon Canyon 3. Oh, has this been modified for the Coco 3? I'm not even sure, to be honest. can't remember what the video... I was more fascinated because he's on he a actually CM8 got the floppy to work. And he has the yeah. door. He has the door. Yeah, there yeah, he's just yeah, trying it, to make us it, jealous. So this has been modified for the Coco 3 because it's he's on an RGB screen and he's got the right colors there. Oh, right. You're correct. Yeah. Okay, off of an 8-inch floppy. Canyon yep. climber. That's cool. So how the next... That's the next amazing. is going to be me me plugging a couple of the other releases I did this week, uh, and thank many thanks to David Ladd who actually put the side by side videos to merge them together so you can kind of see the different versions. So the first one up here, like I said, was specifically for Nick Morota. Uh, we I did six through nine versions of three other games this week, uh, one Coco three game which is Xenia on here, and then two others that are Coco one and two games just to you know give some six through nine love to the the Dragon and Coco one and two community. So on this particular case here, I did a 6809 optimized version, which is about 3 to 7% faster than the original. Uh, and then also a 6309 native mode uh, with TFMs added. And some people were complaining that was too fast. So I later released, I think the day after, a TFM version, but running in emulation mode. So the extra uh, cycle save per instruction not happening on that one, which seems to have kind of balanced it out for some people. Um, Brian Palmer, myself, and Paul Thayer just think that some people are just too old to be playing video games and just can't have the speed. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> I think Nick Morenti's going with that with us. <laughs> well, he is you know, old, so that kind of makes sense. But So left is a 6809 stock original. The middle one's a 6809 optimized, and the right is a 6309. And you can just see you know, how oh, yeah. the splash screen already came up and the scrolling smoother and faster. Mm -hmm. There's not a real lot of difference between the two 6809 versions, but there's a big difference with the 6309 there. Yeah, apparently too big for some, but uh, there, there's a bit of a difference. I mean, one of the reasons doing side by side is when you start them in the exact same spot, you can see like the scrolling has already gone down further yeah, on the, can... the middle one. And I had a couple yeah. of people say that they tried it and they said it actually it does play a bit easier, a bit smoother. So it's it's not a hugely mm. noticeable difference. If I took the time to dissemble the entire program, I mean, Michael Duncan, who, who wrote this and he's from Australia, he uh, obviously was just learning the CPU at the time because there's a lot of you know beginners mistakes doing assembly for speed, and I could probably optimize it a lot further even on the six eight oh nine. But I'm not I don't have the time to do all that. So these are these are quick hacks. Mm -hmm. That's okay. cool. Mm -hmm. Marble, Marble Maze is a game that could definitely use a speed boost. 
Yeah, so six and yeah, on the left, six or nine on the right. I will mention that if you yeah. run the double speed poke on a Coco three and the six or nine version, it's literally almost running four times faster than stock. I didn't show that in this video, but you guys should try it out because it's quite the difference. Wow. And I didn't optimize the level created part except for running in native mode, so it's, it's that part's not hugely. But the scrolling is quite a bit faster. Probably skip past the. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh, well. Unfortunately, I can't play the same on both, so. <laughs> mm, artifact galores look good. Wow, look at that. Hey, so let's move the two. Yeah. Yeah. And these, these are small patches. Like, literally, I'm patching maybe about 30 to 50 bytes per program to do this. Wow, that's all. So you're doing you, so. So I guess you're, you're doing things like optimizing like certain register loading, so it does it in one cycle rather than two cycles, and things like well, that. Well, turning on native mode does that automatically on a six three nine. Some instructions you save a cycle compared to a six eight zero nine. So that's mm. the quick and dirty way to get some speed up. The other thing I'm doing, I'm, I was trying to find games that have scrolling because that's notoriously slow, even with a stack blast. And some of the older games actually didn't even use stack blast; they were just doing load copy, load store, load store type things, which are really slow. So those ones, I actually just found the chunks of code and I replaced it with a TFM instruction from the 6 through 9. And then usually I had bytes left over. So then I would just put a bunch of no operations or a branch ahead to skip the dead code that's no longer being used. So that's the only two optimization I'm doing. I turn native mode on. I throw in a one or two TFMs in a game and that's all I'm doing. Skip the yeah, dead okay. code. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So let's see it. Yeah, F16, and I, this this I will mention too, because some people preferred F16 running on the six or on the uh, Coco three with the double speed up poke because it plays faster and smoother. But then you can't use the sound speech back because now the clock's too fast. Mm. With this patch, because it's speeding it up using the six three nine instead, the clock is still staying at 0.895 megahertz. Therefore, your sound speech pack on the sped up version works perfectly fine. So you get all the sound effects. The yep. speech and this everything is one else. of the few games that actually have made really good use of the sound effects of that of that chip. Oh yeah, what a difference! What oh a difference. look at that! Wow, yeah, far out. That's huge. Yeah. And even explodes faster. <laughs> <laughs> That's the native mode part. That wasn't TFM, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. But anyway, yeah, those That's are all cool. available for download. Uh, Pear Serrat has ported over the first three games that I did last week already to the Dragon. Okay. Uh, Color Car Action, Gantlet, one. Oh, what the heck was the other one? Oh, Touchstone so last week. Right. So those those are already up on the uh, Color Computer Archive, and he's going to be porting these other three I just did. Well, two of them. He'll be doing the two Coco one and two ones. So F-16 Assault Marble Maze, those will be coming for the Dragon near you as well. So kudos to the Dragon, guys. You guys get some 6 or 9 upgrades too. Awesome. Now this here is another Dragon 32 game, and this is done by Rob's Retro Rambles. We've had him on the, on the uh, news section before for some of these. And this is a game called Pub Crawl, which I'd never <laughs> seen before. I've done Pub Crawls before. And it'll remind <laughs> you somewhat of Poltergeist, the first level of Poltergeist, as you okay. run around pubs trying to drink. <laughs> Hello, oh, you. this is the cool this guy at the lava lamps. Yeah. By BMH Software. Yeah. I love his his, his commentary is hilarious too. So I, I, I wish I could play the whole thing, but it's the whole tape is thirty-two heavy. seconds long. Right. Oh yeah, very what poltergeist. So you've got your uh, home in the, the lower down right down corner. Down you've got all the pubs with their different door entrances <laughs> to volume, get into them. Volume, anyone? Okay. <laughs> and then you have food, I think it is, in the upper left. So you're, oh, basically, you have to go drink a ton I'm of beer. I'm guessing we're by the play school house here, and we've got to make our way to all the various pubs and end up at the burger place at the end. Yeah, because you that get munchies. Then you have to go back home afterwards. <laughs> ah, now are you, are we walking <laughs> yeah. or driving? Ooh. You're walking and okay. getting run over by cars, just uh, like Oh, just like Poltergeist, okay. <laughs> Stumble. This, now, is this the only screen it has? Go the right way. Actually, I was going to show them drinking, drinking some of the beer here. Let's back. So, who is he? The yellow person? Yeah. Oh, I see. It looks like a beer right. mug, and then a mug empties out. Yeah. No. Are those constables there that are chasing him? 
<laughs> I think they're cars, actually. Uh, okay. Just like what you guys did. <laughs> constables. <laughs> constables on patrol. Ooh. I don't know. In the UK, wouldn't the constables be joining you for a drink? I don't know. For sure, but... <laughs> and there's the burger. Lovely. Oh, now, now he's got to get home. Yeah. No burp. <laughs> okay. We got Mr. Golden Opportunity there. Yeah. yeah. Let's follow this. If you drink that much beer, you'd be having a golden opportunity coming right. right. That's for sure. <laughs> he's following the constable. True. And you complete and a level. Say, That's neat. That's I'm a neat sure idea for a game. So I'm going to have to yep. do this all over again, aren't I? Now, at this point, he realized he forgot to zoom the camera in. <laughs> we saw, we saw <laughs> what was going on, though. We saw it. Starts yeah. off slow. That's, That's pretty cool. good. I, I like his reviews because he has a nice sense of humor during the whole thing. So. Yeah. And then well presented with this. You know, yeah, you can see that as close. You can see there's their vehicles, right? So. so they have different beers, different levels. One's got Guinness and one's got... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bass Ale or Guinness? Or... I, I do know as you go up levels, you get more cars to dodge. That so gets harder and harder. Okay. Yeah. What I figured the they should have you... done uh... is that after you've completed drinking all the beer and you go to the burger place, you should now be drunk so and now your person awesome. should wander around oh, a little bit randomly as well as being steered by you to try to get back to the house. That would have been really cool. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto does a good job of that. Whenever you drink, you get the verbal vision. You can't see well, you can't steer well, and you have to wait for that effect to wear off. <laughs> I overshot. Anyway, it's a, it's a pretty cool yeah, that game. Is neat. I've never that's seen a neat before, game. So. Never seen this before. I like it. I like how the, the 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 mug goes down too, right? So yeah, yeah it gets faster as you drink. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, moves faster too. Uh, this is from Chet Simpson earlier on in the week. <clears throat> Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it on the show today, but he's been working on a VGM to SN chiptune convert using his prototype CPF player for the Coco, okay. and he's had a couple little iterations of it. It's definitely not working perfectly, but this is converting from. Um, the uh, VGM format, which is a standard format for games. I think, Stevie, you probably know more about this than I, I do. I just know it stands for video game music. It's, but it's so a it's standard kind of, across it's kind of, yeah, it's multiple a standard, platforms. So it's right? kind of like a MIDI format that's, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not perfect, but you can recognize the tune. Yeah, it sounds a little distorted, but that's so. You, that's you, that's you, coming out of the six. That's coming out of the six bit. I'm guessing. Yeah. No, no, it's coming it's out, out of, of one of the one of the sound chips. Audio chips. Oh, okay. Sounds a little six bitish. Probably has to do with the original sample. I thought he yeah, maybe, update, but maybe not. <clears throat> I, I know he did an update to it a little bit later that plays a little bit better, and we played the Moon Patrol one I think previously. That he did that oh, one sounded yeah, really yeah good. that one sounded really yeah good. That's, that yeah was spot on. Yep. Simon and Jonathan. just because we're on a, si a sound kick, <clears throat> Simon yes. released a new four voice player that's using his his sawtooth style. But this is, actually has a song that's literally over three minutes long, and the player and the sound data, and this is taking slightly less than half a CPU time, about a third I think, is actually only five and a half k long for the wow. entire thing. Wow, that's pretty impressive. For a little bit here. I love Simon. Yeah. This is a song using his demo, too, isn't it? Yeah. No, I don't think so. I know it's different. He said it's a different offer. I love the low end on that. That bass is really, so really good. good. Yeah. yeah. And you get a That's nice really little good. kind of a portamento effect in some of those notes, too, like you're grabbing a stick and just shaking that note. Yeah, but I brought, brought it. Yeah. 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 But the fact that it, yeah, it, it, it's such so a small clean. amount of RAM and the fact that it is only taking like one third of the CPU time versus the half of some of his previous efforts have taken, you could have this running in the background game with pretty decent CPU. Yeah, it's kind of what Paul Fiscarelli did with Run Dino Run. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and that, that Sawtooth, wave, Sawtooth waveforms always sound good. That um, demo I did last week of the ACO 160. Um, that was using a sawtooth waveform. Yeah, I call it a crunchy sound. I just think yeah. it sounds so damn good. Mm. And it does because yeah, typically the bottom the, end is that bass is really clean. Yeah, the bass is really good. The, the bottom end is good. Um, like most of the four voice music, unless somebody did something special, they all had that kind of organ sound. So most yeah. of the three, four, three and four voice music we sound all sounded like an organ. 
Um, and there's few exceptions to that. Like I know a lot of the data soft uh, marquee intro screen sounded a little better. Poo Yan was pretty good. Um, but, you know, we're so used to hearing a fairly stock sound that this is so outside of that norm that it's it's refreshing. Yeah, yeah well, the, that organ sound, that was, um, that's basically a square wave. Okay. A what is this, wave what is this crap here? Is this something from OS Yeah, 9? this is by some hack Crikey. in Australia. <laughs> Crikey. Um, <laughs> he, he decided to, you know, we we had talked about his his promotion of the game. He wanted to hide the 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 you know some of the boss aliens and and have it as a surprise for the player. And then you know the next day he posted this and put it in there. So I don't know why he did that, but uh, he actually did a, a little demo video. He did it for I Nick guess, Morota's birthday. Yeah, there you go. There you go. We have an excuse. I mean, reason now. <laughs> yeah, it was a bloody good video though. Yeah. Gunstone. And for Amigos Retro Gaming, this is an upcoming 639 required game, so you'll need to get your upgrade chip. Wimp. He's throwing off some of the levels. Look at the size of those explosions! Crikey! <laughs> <laughs> I love that warp oh, effect. That's cool. That's cool. The music is rocking too. Is that six bit back music? <laughs> <laughs> He's using Simon's sawtooth player. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kennedy! What is that? Oh, that's cool. That's the boss. We don't know that. That Can looks either cool. Confirm that or looks deny cool. that allegation. Requires 512. Oh, I really like uh, does it require a color computer? Now, uh, 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 Nick, did you have any comments you want to make on it, uh, like the music and stuff? Uh, no, not at this stage. <laughs> well, you, really we can cool. say it was composed oh, you by your son. Oh, right? By the way, we have. Oh, well, the have music a... is yeah, the music composed by my son. So, um, don't no, forget in your news. I don't know if you have it, but there's an exclusive new debut of a Joey and Coco comic strip. Do you have that queued up, Curtis, or? Oh, no, I don't. Okay. It would be uh, joey.gracenote.ca, so when we get to that. Okay. Unless you want to just yank it up while I'm finishing the news off, and then you can just quickly throw it on. I'm pretty good at yanking things. Sure, why not? What's your son saying? <laughs> yeah. That's Too great. much information again. Good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> we needed to know that. Uh-oh. It's, I'm not going to say what it is, but I think it's the next episode. Okay. So we do. It's, it's been yanked, so it's ready. Okay. Uh, yeah. This here, you'll see there's a Microsoft or Microcolor Basic, which is the MC10, of course, and mm. you would assume it's Jim Gary. It's not. It's somebody else who's porting Dragon a game Dragon Fear on the TRS-80 Color Computer MC10. Yeah, and this is uh, by Jerry Young. He's porting this game from the giant book of computer games, which means Jim Gary actually has He's been in the live finally. chat. He's in the live chat right yeah. now. Jerry, join us. <laughs> we have a celebrity in our chat. He should be on the panel. Yeah. The rest of us. I, I, I just find it. I find it really nice that we're actually getting some other people throwing some love to the MC10 besides Jim, who's like a he's like the Ed Jim, Snyder. Jim of the needs MC10 a break. World. Yeah, Jim needs a yeah. break. Okay. Oh, lots of text. Yeah, that's the uh, listing. Wait, I missed you. Welcome, Jerry. You start this expiration of 25 moves. You must complete your task before the moves run out. Press any key to begin. Please stand by, Jerry. Jerry was a race car driver, drove faster every day. Uh, Jerry, you are at 55. Your amulet signals that there is a solid wall nearby. You have 25 moves left. Treasure, treasure, treasure. I'm not you. I missed some of the in information here. So you found yeah, there's a bit of a map. Okay. Your amulet signals that there is a dragon. Oh, so this is kind of like Minesweeper a little bit. You know when you're so many squares away from something? Yeah, or Hunt the Wumpus style. Yeah. You have five yeah. arrows remaining. Which direction do you want to shoot? Oh, so that was very hunt to want the ferocious dragon. You have hit a dragon, but you have only wounded it. Oh, you are carrying sixty-five. You are at sixty. Hitting a hitting a dragon with an MC ten. Yeah, you have four arrows remaining. You, you, you can prop hit. his mouth open with the MC ten. Oh, <laughs> but you have a only dragon thirty-two. You are at 65. You're carrying that. Okay, so 65 is a coordinate. I guess every yeah, block X and is marked. Coordinate, okay. Yeah. You have three arrows remaining. You have hit a ferocious dragon and you killed it. You're rewarded with 147 gold pieces. That is awesome. All right. 
So I can find the map again here. Can it shows up again? I'll go back to the map. Good. Come in. Somewhere over here. Good job, Jerry. Hey, come on sometime and talk to us about your adventures in MC10. I'd love to hear about it. I can't find it at the moment. But anyway, yeah. It's, okay. Uh, it's, no, that's it's cool. nice to that's see cool. some new developments. So. This is going to be in the in the link notes. We'll have this later. You're going to give me a text file so I can put this in the show notes later? For the show. Oh, I forgot to paste that, didn't I? I was kind of rushed. This Don't worry about it now, as long as you've got so. a file somewhere. Yeah, I do. Okay. We'll, 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 it'll, we'll, we'll fix it in post. Okay. Uh, <laughs> miscellaneous x Roar Test. I love Miscellany. Yeah. So this is uh, by a YouTuber named Lucas Boy. I think he's one of the guys that is a regular on the Amigos show. And if Amigos can tell me if I'm right or wrong on that, because he made some men- references to the show. Okay. And basically he's got uh, x Roar running, running Coco 1 and 2 games. And he goes through a bunch of games like Arkanoid, Demon Attack, Pinball, and a whole bunch of others rather quickly because he's just kind of experimenting with the emulator at this point. Um, and that with, with commentary. Arkanoid. Ar- so that's got pretty good speed. I will not be able to keep up with that. The emulator lets you do... Oh, it slows down when stuff gets too busy. I like that. So he goes through a whole bunch of you know okay. games. just And a, a bunch of them... like he, of he, exploration. Yeah, well, part of the exploration is he was trying to load some Cocoa 3 cartridges on a Cocoa 1 and 2 ah, emulators. So of course, work. those crash. But yeah, okay. There was not enough color to handle that request. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, then you got to play the uh, yeah, pinball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this one he was impressed with because of the 3D graphics. That's a yeah. good game. Jerry, you're gonna, uh, Jerry would like, would love to have you on the show. And the palette fits this one. Yes. yes. Only, yeah. And only For this sure, one. What? Now, that I one is uh, one I should, when I get okay. time again, I should uh, actually see if I can 6 or 9 optimize that sucker. So I either need to get a... Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I've never Tetris. seen the Coco Tetris before. Yeah. That's that's one of the fat binary cartridges that actually has a uh, higher res on the uh, Where you're used to you the up being the immediate drop, having to put. Kindercom. That's one of my favorite things to run in the back. Wow. Kindercom, drop educational stuff. Let's scribble. What is this? Uh, is this the Rubik's cube game? Board. Yeah. Color cubes. He was impressed. About as impressed with it as you are. <laughs> Push enter to start. <laughs> Not this style of game. What's up, dinosaur? You want some of these? Whoa! I'm gonna fucking eat you. Run, run, Diana, run. Run, Diana, run. <laughs> yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. X so is a nice great. Just... X is a great emulator for you. you just want to run Dragon. Coco one Coco and two, one yeah. Two stuff. Yep. Yeah. It's got the uh, the really good uh, artifacting too. Yeah. Like it, it rivals Mames. So. Kinder Comp. It's not a Tuma. Is what Ken Riker <laughs> says. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, At any rate, uh, he's he's new to the Coco. Like I said, I think he's one of the guys that watches the Amigos regularly too. So hopefully, he'll keep putting out some videos to okay. just give us some opinion from somebody who's like new to the Coco community. Excellent. Because I always like hearing what with people that have never seen the machine before what they think of it, especially if they take it into the context of when it came out. Cool, mm. cool, cool. Rather cool, than cool. Uh, just as old timers here. <laughs> And here, uh, last news item, uh, Paul Fiscarelli has the first prototypes uh, run for his Kyoko keyboard to PC adapter. So this is good for if you're trying to play some of the games on MAME, et cetera, and the PC keyboard just doesn't map out the keys in the same spot, so it's hard to play with the keys that were assigned. This is an adapter that'll actually let you plug a Kyoko keyboard into it and then use it actually on your PC on MAME. Mm. So if you have you know arrow keys that should be on your left and right hands instead of all crammed into a diamond shape or something, this... This will let you uh, plug that into use with MAME. Could you plug Ed's keyboard so, into that? I'm not sure. You have to ask Paul. Now, is this meant to st- be in line with your Coco while your Coco is still on? So you're. No. Or is this meant uh, no, to it, be. No, it just plugs into the PC itself. You just plug the Coco keyboard yeah. into that connector you see on the screen. Okay, so you need to have a spare keyboard somewhere. Right. Yeah, or just. So that would be kind of cool if this could be kind of passive and go through it where you could have this in line with your regular Coco keyboard and you could just use it when you needed to you know have like a switcheroo uh, um, yeah no, that's Draw a switch. Switch. i am not making a keyboard switcher there's the cry key the cry key yes <laughs> there oh. you go look at that could you use the new oh. mechanical one jason now you have to we got a good name for it so. oh. I, I don't see why you couldn't i don't see why you couldn't 
Yeah. There's probably no reason why you can't plug in a regular PC keyboard and that key, or, or just hot swap them because you can do that with a regular keyboard. And if it's just a USB interface, you should be able to do that. Yeah. Well, mm. he's talking about actually creating one that goes the other direction too. We can use the key PC keyboard on the Coco and maybe making a, a, a version of this board that does both directions. And that's that cool. Way, so that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be really useful. And that's the nice. other thing. Someone in the comment, I was reading that, about that earlier on before the show, and someone in the comments mentioned wh whether you could use it with a Raspberry Pi and an emulator, and and they were saying, yeah, that would work with that. Yeah, so. if it's just USB, but if it becomes a standard USB like HID human interface device, it should work on anything. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, you imagine, you know, you put a, 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 a Raspberry Pi and a, a Coco keyboard, you could just about fit the whole thing in the case the size of the keyboard, one of Ed's yeah. new keyboard cases, and have a whole TRS-80 emulator, hardware emulator built into that <laughs> keyboard box. Yeah, that's cool. And this, of course, will work with Ed's new keyboards too, so. Yeah, neat. Yeah. New and project. that's it for news. And that's it for news. All right, so then how about we switch over to uh, the latest episode of Joey and Coco? I will go ahead and bring that over. Oh my God, what is this? What is that? Okay, so do I, did I need that right now? Okay, all right. So here we have it. If you go to joey.gracenote.ca, a, um, this is uh, the website where DeBruce Moore is uh, featuring uh, Joey and Coco, a brand new comic strip. Um, and so we saw last week it was strip number four that was called Syntax Error. And now we have a live debut of strip number five. Are we ready to see it, boys and girls? So if only DeBruce was here, because I can't say it in his good Canadian voice. You guys ready for strip number five? Yes. yes. Okay, it. so here it goes. Actually, let me do this. Let me zoom in zoom just a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Joey and Coco. So here we have Joey talking to us, Coco. He says, it was a lot of typing, but an awesome game. I can't wait to play again tomorrow. And he's getting ready to hit the power button. And Coco's like, wait, don't. And it looks like he's turned <laughs> off his Coco and his TV because he's got the fade to black thing on the TV there. <laughs> <laughs> love that. And then Oops. the next day, he says, what do you mean you forget the game? And Coco says, got to see, save it, kid. I got a bad short-term memory. Uh, <laughs> That's yes. good. <laughs> so, uh, yes, if we want to talk about regrets, would that be one of them? Uh, possibly working on something and not saving it. <laughs> or working on something and the power goes off or something and you haven't saved it. Yeah. Or, or the saving other one. two cassettes. Saving two cassettes, to saving two cassettes without fast forwarding past the leader. Oh. Yeah. Or, yes. or, do, or, doing a, or doing a C save with it in Poke 65495 mode. Would that not work? That contains. No, not data? on the Coco One. On the Coco uh, One, no. it won't work because, when you, because it, 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 it ups the clock rate, so it ups the pitch. And it saves it at a higher pitch on the cassette. Then when you play it back at the higher pitch, the Coco hardware is designed to detect a specific pitch. Uh, and when you play it back, it won't, it won't detect anything. Uh, so it, it's, it, it all works as normal. It, it, it will, it, you'll get the save screen, you'll get level on your tape, and you'll think, yep, that's working great. And then you switch everything off, and then you go to load it back in, and it's like, oh, won't load. I, I did that a number of times and kicked myself. Wow. Yeah. No. So this one was There's probably a number down. you could... Probably a number you could poke here or there to change the pitch that the Coco's looking for to make it work with that higher pitch, higher pitched save. Yeah, don't. It's uh... yeah, it's it's a hardware it's a hardware issue. It's because the cassette has a, a physical resistor and capacitor network to to filter out and and isolate certain pitches. But there is a way. I didn't know it back in the day, but there is actually a way you can get that to work. All you do is you slow down the tape, change the pitch of the tape. But that's not easy to do on a on a deck that doesn't have a pitch control. Mm, yeah, some some decks had that. Mm. Oh, so Jerry Young is now feeding back on your video. He says in the game, the map only appears one time at the beginning. Um, that was an interesting looking game, though, Jerry. I'd love to have you join us sometime, but you want to talk about it. Uh, De Bruce says I always I always ended up C saving twice due to tape errors. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, me too. Save yeah. often, right? Save and save often. Yep. The golden rule. And on rules both sides, of, uh, on different tapes. And... Yeah. I do that. I even do that with my STCs. I take the STC out and copy it onto a hard drive, so I've got backup copies. Oh, yes. And it gets corrupted. Yep. I've gotten corruptions. Yeah. Yep. 
that was the main reason why I went because a lot of people are like, oh, I, you know, I like still working with cassette. That's why when uh, discs came along, I kind of just said, see ya to cassettes, never to come back. <laughs> never, ever, mm. you know. It yeah. was never easy to find your program in a string of programs. Yeah. Well, you had to write especially down the index you, numbers for your uh, especially yeah. if you, yeah, counter. Yes, especially if you used a 90 minute cassette <laughs> or a 120. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you'd have to rewind you, you, your beginning, reset it to zero, and then fast forward to. You you could use a skip I, f command to actually tell it to skip until it found that particular one, but on a ninety minute tape, that takes a while. Yeah. Real time, <laughs> real time. Data almost the same out. amount of yeah. almost the same amount of time as it takes to load a C sixty four game. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my, oh off my. of disc. <laughs> All right. Well, how long was this train wreck? Right three hours, three and a quarter hours. This has been a short show compared to last week, but I, I enjoyed it. Thanks for, I mean, I'm glad we could get together and do this and have our fun and talk about the Coco. Absolutely. Have some chuckles. It's all fun um, and games. It's all fun and games. But we must forget, we <laughs> must not forget, we must remember the most important reason. Well, we are all here today. And let us not forget the reason why we are here. Happy birthday to you, Nick Rota. <laughs> Happy birthday. See, it starts out nice. But let's see how it to goes. To you, you mother effer. Yeah, see, Happy there we go. Didn't birthday, take long. you scum sucking SOB. <laughs> <laughs> Happy you guys are my friends, right? <laughs> to you. <laughs> oh man, I can go anywhere else and get it. I can go many places and get abused. <laughs> he feels so special now. <laughs> well, why do that far. when you can just stop here at your one-stop shop one -stop at Coco shop. Talk? In all it. seriousness, I love the show. I love you guys. The the, the Discord, the community. Uh, the chat, everything has just been really, really awesome, and I'm very really grateful for it. Likewise, totally agree. Here, here. You, you love this Discord, <laughs> Dat Cord. I, like, I love Dat Cord. The Bruce says I, I sound like a Z Sharp. The Bruce said I sound like a sad man. Now, now here's the he got, he's, here, he's pronounced it right, Z Sharp. <laughs> here's the here's the real surprise. We wanted to save this for the end. But we spared no expense, and we flew David Ladd over to Nick Morota's house. David Ladd's been lurking in the bushes this whole time. He's about <laughs> ready to jump out and uh, let you blow out his candle. So. <laughs> oh. Watch out, he's got a nasty rash. Hello, everyone. <laughs> he's got a nasty rash from the bushes. Is everyone excited today? I know you I am. poison ivy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was scare scarily accurate. <laughs> Oh. Actually, actually, since uh, Nick's up there in Canada, I, David may have uh, had to uh, go somewhere warmer. It's, I'm sure it's cold there now, especially in metric. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's cold. It's shrinkage. Well, we're gonna roll the uh, we're gonna roll the outro, and then we'll be oh, back for parting thoughts. After, That's from Seinfeld. After these words here, yeah, and Jerry, thank you, Sein Jerry. And Jerry, if you'd like to come on and join us sometime, down. we'd love to have you talk yeah, about your please, MC10 please projects. Do. Please join us. If we haven't scared yeah, your way of all our sophomoric behavior. Uh, and Amigos Retro Gaming was here as well, which yes, would be yes. awesome to have. Uh, all right. Well, we're gonna roll. We're gonna roll closing credits, and we'll be back here in just a moment. But let's not a, let's not forget today is Nick Morota's birthday. This concludes another episode of Coco Talk, the world's leading live talk show featuring the Tandy Color Computer. For all things Coco Talk, visit us on the web at cocotalk.live. We'd love to hear from you. Send feedback, suggestions, even segments via email to Coco Talk at cocotalk.live. Coco Talk is rocking the 8 bit world, keeping the Tandy flame alive. We may be mocked, but we'll never stop, because Coco Talk is rocking the 8 bit world. Consider supporting the show with a purchase of merchandise from our retro swag shop at 8bit256.com. If you'd like to become a patron of the show, click the Patreon link at our website at cocotalk.live. Coco Talk is rocking the 8 bit world, keeping the tiny flame alive. We may be mocked, but we'll never stop, 
Cutco Talk would not exist without the community, its cast, crew, and contributors. Thanks go to Curtis Boyle, David Ladd, Mark Overholzer, Grant Leedy, Bruce Moore, Nick Marenkis, Ron Delvo, Rick Adams, Jason Riker, Richard Lorbieski, Jim Brain, Tom C., Rob Inman, Mark Bosley, Brian Joyce, Ken Riker, David O'Connor, Brian Weasler, Terry Steggy, Nick Morota, John Strong, and many more, especially to Steve Bjork for production suggestions and James Different Daffer for making my head explode. Please help support the Coco community by visiting some of its various contributors. A list of resources is available at imacoconut.com. That's I-M-A-C-O-C-O-N-U-T dot com. The Coco Talk theme song is copyright 2008 by D. Bruce Moore and Greg Sheeler. Mixed, mastered, and produced by D. Bruce Moore. It would not be an episode of Coco Talk without Nick Morota. Nick Morota, and, and speaking of that, Diet Dr Pepper, that's that's half the David Ladd mix drink right there. All you need is some water to go with that. So one part Diet Dr Pepper, one part water. You've got yourself a David Ladd. Um, your taste buds will thank you for it. Your bladder might not. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out. I was trying to figure out the next year when November 9th will fall on a Saturday. I was unsuccessful, but hopefully we are still on the uh, 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 doing well and on the air when that happens. Well, we can do a special midnight and Friday, you know, midnight edition or something. So, but I appreciate this guy. You guys, seriously, you gave me a fantastic birthday. I'm, I'm very, uh, you guys made me laugh. Thank you so much. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you. Uh, Michael, I'm still going to the theme park on my next birthday. Yeah, Michael Pitsley. Um, <laughs> Michael Pitsley just joined us in the live chat. He says, uh, "I/O error. Every time you tried to see load something important, or something took hours of typing in with those I/O <laughs> diet doctor thunders." What Al Hartman says, right? That's the uh, what is that? The Walmart or uh, yeah, it's Walmart. All right. So please the, load, please load, please in load. In the live yeah, chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In our it live could chat. be you just bump the volume knob or something <laughs> stupid. Yes, yes. Um, yep. Mark B., Terry Steen, Ken Reichard, and DeBruce, and Curtis Boyle, and Mark Overholzer, and Tom C., and Ken Reichard, and Mark Overholzer, and Al Hartman has been here. Ken Reichard has been here. Ken, Ken, Mark B, Tom C, Nick Morota, Alexander Wallace, DeBruce Moore has been here in the live chat. Terry Steen, um, Al Hartman, and Tim Franklin has been here. And Alexander Wallace and Rob Eanman, Terry Steggy, Ken Reichard, Ben Drakes, our VR guy, and DeBruce, and Terry Steen, and Rob Inman. Very active. Arnold A. Lampell has been here. Hey, Arnold. Um, has been here, and Nick Morota, and Rob Eanman, and, and all kinds. Paul Fiscarelli said, yo, how you doing? And he said, happy birthday, Nick. Um, Retro Innovation stopped by, but minimal trolling from the troll. Uh, Retro ENG was here. Retro Eng. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Retro Eng? I don't know. Paul Fiscarelli, Amigos Retro Gaming was here. Uh, Retro Eng and Jason Downs. Oh, he mentioned that he got that Tano Dragon 64 off eBay for $66. That's cool. Oh, Coco man. Man was been here. And Terry Steen and Tim Franklin. Sean Ernst stopped by and said hello. And Paul Fiscarelli. Um, uh, Rob Inman, Amigos, Polly, lots of the people. Fonz. The Fonz was here. Yes. Uh, Ralph Mouse was Elvis there. I was cited too. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> We did Jackson. it all. We did it all. Um, so that is it. We've done it all. We've said you it all. You didn't mention me, man. We, uh, we did not mention uh, Ronnie Chong, a.k.a. Ron Delvo. In the yeah, live man. panel, we had many people, some of them still here, <laughs> some of them still awake. Ron Delvo is still here. Thank you for being here, Ron. Keeping the flame alive, man. All right, man. Yeah. Um, I just Mark... like to mention that we're in Hollywood Squares mode here, and I, yeah. I'd like to take Nick. Uh, I'll take Nick Morota for the win. There we go. 
Um, I'd like to thank Mark, Mark D. Overholzer for being here, and Brian, the music man, Shoebring for being here. Nick Morentes, thank you for being here. Jason, you know, if this were Riker. Brady Bunch, we'd be married, right, Jason? Yes. John Lowry, thank you for being here. Al <laughs> Curtis DeBoyle uh, has been here. And uh, David O'Connor. And a very special thank, thank you, you to Nicholas <laughs> Morota. The reason why we get together every week is to celebrate Nick Morota. Uh, we all know it. We're not going to yeah. hide it. So, Nick. So, wait, 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 wait. Nick, there were thank you so much for shows. aging. There were a number of shows that <laughs> aired before I was here. So, what was the. Uh, we were celebrating you before that. we even realized. Okay. It. Oh, so thank you. It that makes yeah. sense. Okay. You, just, you came through and gave us clarity. <laughs> that, that was our um, warm up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you for making me feel welcome. And like, it's, it's, I'm just overwhelmed. Thank you're, you. You're too kind. You are too kind. So, we'll close it on a little bit of music here as we celebrate. Get out your five dollar ukulele there, Jason. So. Oh yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching another episode of Coca Talk, the very special Nick Marota Happy Birthday edition. Available to you live each and every week at 2 p.m. Flow Right of Time. Won't you join us again next week? We certainly hope you do. On behalf of Nick Marota, which the world revolves around, we'd like to thank you for sharing in the glory that is Nick Marota. Um, <laughs> okay, push the button, Frank. We are going to push the button. Say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye to Bye, everybody. everybody. Bye, everyone. All right, we are ending the stream. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. No, you hang up. No, you hang Where up. Where is this smoking show, man? <laughs> I think All I'm right. turning red. All right, we're hanging up now. We're pressing the button.